So we begin with you all, Enoch, Luna, Renee, and Nathaniel. You are all standing in the chapel of the Raven Queen amidst a broken down, tearful Kara Miharian, uh, gently holding a locket with a portrait of her sister in hand. Uh, the chapel itself is beaten and broken and cracks in the stone and bones on the floor and scorch marks of spells litter uh, the entire area. And you all stand before the high priestess of Cloveway, who utters the sentence, I stopped looking for true resurrection a long time ago. It was never supposed to be this way. So why don't you explain to us what the plan was going to be? She's, she turns to you a moment. You can tell that she's still fairly apprehensive. And she slowly stands up from her place on the floor, using her bone staff to prop herself up. Hmm... I've had assassins sent to my way, complete nobodies pretending to want to learn about necromancy. But most of you already have a pre-existing reputation to risk, so I'd like to ask you questions first. Oh yeah, sure. I can um, totally answer a lot of questions while my arm is dying. Well, that sounds like oh. a wonderful idea. Oh, I'm Perhaps gonna go over to you, me. Renee, and put my hand on you and give you my healing hands. Just like on her arm. <laughs> you can see Kara yeah. is unconcerned with all of your wounds at the moment. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> no, it's fine. I just, I don't, I, we don't, we don't need our bar being super dehydrated. So just take eight healing points, please. Yes, I would love to. Perhaps you can move your spell for me then. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Witch Taker. She, with a snap of her fingers, yep, all your banes are gone. And, uh, was there any other spell on you? <laughs> It was just Bane, but yeah, I was would just feel more comfortable without it on. Yes. Uh, that said, as she takes it off, I'll raise my hand. Fantastic, and now I'll put one on all of us. And I'll throw my hand into the air as pink sparks shoot out, and I cast Zone of Truth around all of us. Yep. You I can see she, she tilts her head. Really? Listen, I, we have run into so many people. This is more a precautionary measure than anything else. I raise my eyebrows. To, like, really? <laughs> I'm currently in the corner of the room, kind of just putting Kuro back together. I'm just like, oh, we doing the Zone of Truth thing? Yes, if you would kindly like to join us so that she knows that we're all on the same page. Oh, perfect. Well, it's not like I was going to lie anyways. All right. <laughs> I'm getting them up and working. Okay. Yeah. Pick my swords up while I'm thinking about it. She uh, crosses her arms. So, why are you here? We were told to stop the necromancy healing club, right? Hmm. Yes, you were hunting the Black Vein Queen, yes? She kind of does the two hand gesture, like, oh, well, yeah, you know. <sighs> and you came to, it came to your surprise that she is not here. It, oh. Is she not you? No, but tell an entire country bent on throwing necromancers into jail at the first sight. So, so why are you not specific? responsible behind the terrorist attacks going on in Belkinus? Well, I can say perhaps a few may have taken up necromancy in my stead. I can deny my responsibility all I want, but I cannot be certain that some of them may have looked to me as a sort of inspiration. So but no, hello. I have nothing to do with the spine of death. I have a more specific question, then. Why is it that Chandrell wants you? You can see that her eyes dart to you. <sighs> that bitch! <laughs> yeah, yes. We're, co we're coming close to that census. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure about her anymore. So I... She was calling you the Black Vein Queen, but more specifically, she wanted you alive. Maybe. Explicitly so. Well, what for? That's what we're trying to figure out. I think that the answer might elucid be elucidated if we have the answer to how I came about. And I'm going to pull out the journal once more, the all of, or not the journal, but the notes once more. Ah, yes, the diary. We've been finding these all the way up the roads to you. I don't imagine that you've just been letting them loose. Which means you can see that she looks furious at, at, at you holding the notes. Where did you find those? Around, mm. honestly. Everywhere. There was one on a there was one in a grave. There was one inside of a box. And they were everywhere. Almost like crumbs leading to you. I don't think that you left them. Not anymore. 
If you'd like, you can have them back. She holds up her hand. I don't need them anymore. Besides, you're an investigator. Maybe you could piece these together into something that I could not. Well, I suppose the first question is, how did you come about losing it? Well, it's a long story, and you hear the creak of the door, and you can see uh, just at the front of the chapel, kind of by the door, you can see it's, uh, you hear Jacqueline's voice. Kara, is um everything all right? There's just a bone golem in the middle of the room. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, I look at, look at oh. <laughs> I look at Kara and I say, well, she is just a tall glass of sweet tea, ain't she? She, she she just l- scratches the back of her head a little bit in embarrassment. Yes, dear, all is well. It seems there was just a plain, simple misunderstanding. <laughs> and Jacqueline slowly creaks open the door, uh, creaks, creaks open the door, holding a wand kind of pointed at you all in a shaky hand. Oh, oh. oh honey. <laughs> Renee's just going to wave her like half dead hand and like, hello. <laughs> Cara, it feels weird life. being That's on the odd end and being right pointed now. at oh something. Cara I notices bring, I... this and, and hand waves it. No, Jacqueline, dear, I didn't say the code phrase. We've been over this. It, it, it's, <laughs> I seem to have oh. forgotten some of my tools. Oh, you, oh, you guys, you guys have a secret word. Safety That's... word. Yeah. Enoch. What? Well, <laughs> you seen <laughs> Luna put her head in her hands. <laughs> Well, when you're hunted by thousands of assassins and people trying to take control of your wits, and she looks to Nathaniel, you can't be too certain. We have a lot of safety measures around here. Here, here. Well, the better safe than sorry. Nods to him, like, uh huh, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yep, Nathaniel nods with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're both just like, yep, we've been there. Yeah, no, being safer is better than being sorry. Jacqueline uh, kind of steps into the chapel and starts inspecting the area, and she just, like, rubs two fingers on the floor. Did you put glyphs of warding in the chapel? Uh, uh, yeah, she did. I brush off the debris. <laughs> 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 yeah, she did. They're, they're very effective. Actually, quite not so. I wasn't blown up by one. Only a skeleton. I gotta, I gotta learn yeah, how to do the that. The skeletons kind of led the, their way into it. They, they I, basically were, like, I think we this. are getting off topic. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. Perhaps but, we can take this conversation elsewhere, where there's not so much say. destruction. Oh, no, well, yeah, I can clean this up a bit if you want me to. I just wave my hand. She holds up a hand. No, trust me. It's safer that you don't. Yep, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Realizing, oh, there's probably more glyphs that we have not seen. May, may I ask a question before we leave? What is it? It's about the chapel, actually. The Raven Queen is a interesting deity to commit <sighs> yourself to. That's going to be another long story. I may have a long story for you as well. <sighs> Will you we at least do it over drinks? Yes! Oh my god, I was just about to say it. You you, know, are, you have a very good mind. Let's go know, get drinks, please. So I which already will it like be? you more than your sister, you know. Already. <sighs> So which will it be? Make no mistake, this is for my own benefit. Oh, no, no. Just you didn't uh, have us wake up in a rent in a room where we had no idea where the hell we were or why we were there. So. Wait, make, make no mistake, Nathaniel? And to be quite honest, you are a lot more forthcoming than most. I might pull out the bottle of whiskey. Adventurers nowadays are very strange. Are they usually so chatty and complimentary? I wish they wouldn't be, but you fall in with the lot. So... <laughs> Which will it be? It's better than it. murder hobos, really. Mm, so she see, she you. leads you she leads you out. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so she leads you out, and you can see that there appears to be a kind of small mob that has kind of surrounded the place, and I haven't placed everybody's tokens. <laughs> oh I god. Forgot. Ah, um, if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. Hey. And what did we call the, What did you call the Tabaxi, Davy? Oh, uh, it's. Uh, f- what's his actual name? Lord Fluffykins. No, his actual <laughs> name. I don't know. Pop uh, quiz, Kame, Davy. Kame, what is Kame. his actual name? Uh. Kame. Uh, Captain. Okay, Ka- Kame. It's Captain Kitty. 
Captain Kitty! Of course, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Captain Kitty is there, as is Jacqueline, Francel, uh, Francis, and um, Francel. <laughs> the, the majority of Cloveway is here as well. Oh, looks like today's a Bones Day. I just it is a Bones sure. Day! It's a Bones Day and a half today! I just want to make sure Sorry, my swords continue. are away, please. <laughs> just weapons are stowed, mm-hmm. and I don't want to get fucking spelled out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, and everything's sheathed up. Uh, probably it's coming to my mind that, oh, fuck, I need to fix the damn thing. Uh, I'll, do, wanna... I'll do it privately. Yeah, I want to wait for that. Yeah. So yes, you guys head outwards and you can see that there's a lot, there's a crowd and a lot of them get uh, kind of in a a little startled at everyone coming out. And Kara holds out her free hand and shouts out with some thaumaturgy. All is well, everyone, return to your business. And she seems to say something in a low bellowing language that none of you can understand. Hmm. It, it... Oh. Not necessarily would I recognize it, but is it something that I have heard before? Not necessarily can I understand what she's saying, but um, is this a language that I've ever heard before? Have you ever heard Abyssal before? I have. I don't. Oh. Uh, have you? I understand her. Yes, I you know understand Abyssal, her. Celestial, under- common, and Elvish. Yep, I understand exactly what she says. I know you, Abyssal. You understand exactly what? Okay, you you know Abyssal? I know Abyssal. I know Abyssal, <laughs> Abyssal I have, yeah. I have uh, three languages. Those Ooh. are, and I'm fine with saying this, you can put it on the wiki. I have common, draconic, for obvious reasons, and yeah. abyssal. Wow. <laughs> See, uh, right. It came in handy. Well, well, I'm, an I'm elective. trying to remember where I learned abyssal. I think it was from my sage background. I needed a college credit. Yeah, probably, because okay, sage gives you an extra language. Yeah, all right. Well, you you hear her, and you you hear her say that the raven has brought its children to the shore in Abyssal. And a lot of shoulders kind of slump down and uh, relax. And she turns to you, code language. We have to take precautionary measures in the event someone pretends to me me or deci- uh, decides to deceive us. No, it's fine. It's, you know, like I said, rather safe than sorry. Secret secrets. You can see the Leonin- I'm not fun unless you tell me. <laughs> The Leonin uh, continues to stand guard, hands ready to cast, uh, glowing as if a simple hand movement will let loose a spell. High Priestess, I've seen these lot earlier this morning. Are you sure the sun will rise tomorrow? And then Karo, uh, Kara interrupts him. Put your bloody hands down, Kaime, it's me. Or should I share your little escapades with the flumps with the entirety of the town to prove it? What? Yes! Cap- <laughs> Yes. And I just looks over like, I would like to know that immediately and today. Kaime's face goes bright red and he puts his hands down and he salutes. Uh, that won't be necessary, my lady. It's uh, good to see you safe. I'll tend to the perimeter. Oh, uh, uh, have you ever seen a kitten blush? And he, he starts to walk off. A few of the other guards are chuckling and he she shuts them up and he tells them to go off in another direction. So they start to patrol the area. Uh-huh. I make a mental note that someone that looks a lot like Renee just happens to be hanging out. That's weird. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, yeah, Renee's he's he's there too. He's like, he's just uh, goes and he sees you yeah, kind of yeah, like battered and bruised, Renee, and he jumps and leaps to give you a hug. Oh, oh my she'll god! Hug back. Uh, yep, 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 I'm okay. Ah, like she's kind of like <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Like, sorry. Ow. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. It's primarily just like this side, and she like just like just over at like the arm area. It's like it's it's mostly this side, but you know I've been taken care of. It is okay. I've had, I you know I shouldn't say that because then I'll make I'll just jinx myself. I'm okay. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I, I I was thinking about leaving, but then you, you went into the chapel, and I I I wasn't sure. But maybe maybe we could leave together. Yes, this is what happens when you have a group of people with you. It means that you don't die. Like, you're just oh. sitting there like, mm-hmm. And Kara speaks of, speaking of dying, I'm about to do so, of thirst. Is the sweet and sour yes. open? I think so. All right. She Thanks. goes She goes and gives a little hug to Jacqueline. I'll be back soon. Aww. She, she waves over and uh, she just like clutches one hand to her chest and just like as you pass by, she just like whispers to you all, I'm so glad that you're not trying to kill her. <laughs> and I, I just two thumbs up, like two thumbs up, really wide smile with her. 
I... Do I still have the hydrangea she gave me? You do, yes. Can I put it in my hair, please? Absolutely, you may. I, uh, <laughs> I give her those wide eyes of someone who's like, or of someone who is pretending to be really sincere. <laughs> I am glad too. For what it's worth, I did appreciate the flowers. Did you? <laughs> like, like, hearing, like it, I, I feel like hearing what? that, Renee's just like, I can't wait to put you in a flower clown before we leave. <laughs> it will look so lovely. Oh, perhaps Maybe I could help out. Maybe put hat. Oh, I yes. think he would look lovely in daisies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we should put it around the hat so it has to stay on. Luna's just gonna nudge you, Renee. You are evil, you know that. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. Where do you think I get it from? She like looks, <laughs> gestures <laughs> over to Nathaniel, kind of like does the side eye over to Nathaniel. I'm like, come on, like, who do I work with? Fair, fair. Uh, Gotta get your right, right. You can. Oh, I'm kind of okay. sticking close to Kara because I feel like I want to strike a conversation with her at some point here. Okay, well, I think you, I, I think you all we're do, all and don't worry, there'll be plenty of time Literally, everyone for that. wants to talk to this woman. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm just like I'm constantly staring at the bone arm is mm-hmm. where my mind's going. Yeah, and you guys, you know, head. It's a short distance, and on the way, you can see the children that were uh, chasing the skeletal cat earlier is holding the the kind of limp body and like tossing it up at Kara. Please like like wanting her to conjure it again. She just goes, "No." And heads back, continues on her way without a second thought. Like um, then like literally tossing the the, the the skeleton kind of like Renee shuffles a little bit away like mm. <laughs> are like, the kids someone else can be in front of that. <laughs> are the kids still kind of cowering away from us? Or it- no, seeing that you're in so such close proximity with Kara, they seem to have completely lowered their guard. Can I like reach down and cast light on the the cat's skull? <laughs> <laughs> like what I did yes, for the kid. Yes, you may. You may do that. And like what I oh did my for, god! Like oh, what I so did for, it's like what I did for uh, for Eliza and Edmund. You, yeah, but now it's just like a lit up cat head. It is, <laughs> and now you see just a small like round skull of a cat glowing a bright r- white and the children are like ooh and they start like fly like play flying it around like an airplane <laughs> oh god and they leave you guys alone you head into the sweet and sour and you see Priscilla she waves and just is taken a, a back a little bit at you guys kind of just like covered in filth and wounds i was oh. planting um don't worry about it just a regular little spat give me my, my regulars I still can't believe you were planting. What was the plan with that again? Perhaps. Uh, I have gotten used to seeing some of those flowers. A few of them are actually uh, allergic, allergenic. Oh, okay. Hmm. I'll make a garland for you later. Huh? Oh, okay. Right. And she just immediately, like deadline towards uh, one of the tables. Uh, it seems to be a favorite of hers, and she just flops down and lets her staff down beside her. And I'll just show her portrait just so you have something to look at while you chat. Yay! Yay! So Yay. Fucking beautiful artwork, man. She's so Once again, switching between looking at her and that skeleton farmer. Yeah. <laughs> I love that guy. I love that farmer. I do love like the uh, like Angel's whole style here. I really mm. do. It's it, it's nice and it's it's roughness really matches this uh, mm-hmm. this town. Yeah. She slumps down and you can see that uh, Priscilla brings her a bottle of nondescript liquid, and she just kind of pours it into a mug and takes a few sips every now and then, taking a few deep breaths closing her eyes, taking in kind of the smell of the tavern, and then leans back. All right, who's first? I'll take a jab. All right. And I'm sitting down next to her, and I pull out my bottle and want some, or... No, no. All right. And I take a swig. You're a follower of Erethus, are you not? I am. And more recently, I began to question those followings. Yeah, it's a stubborn lot when they first came into the country, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I can imagine. I was stubborn too. Till recently. No. Oh. How nice. You mm. still are. What are you talking about? 
I'm no, stubborn in I'm stubborn in some ways. I've definitely evolved. Come on. I will say that, but you know, me and you are both still stubborn. That hasn't changed. Oh yes, no, I I get that. But no, let's go back to what you said um, earlier. Um, you said um, that they were stubborn before. Do you know followers of Elrith this? A few. Is that common? Oh, okay. Most of them did not last long. Either moved out or place split. It was completely consumed by that Church of the Eternals. Mm. Terrible not people. Exactly the, not exactly a pretty sight for anyone. No. Particular interest. So, ask but, a question. Go on. She takes a few sips out of her mug. I'm ultimately curious about two things. And this is mainly because I, I'm searching for answers more for myself just as much as for everyone else here. Of but course you off, are. No one ever comes to just say hi anymore. Well, what is it? Well, hi. And my first question is Chandra. Why... N- not only why is she a bitch, but also ultimately why does she want you ultimately like is it your power is it something that you have or is it something that she thinks you have she takes a big swig of her mug I thought you would be the ones to have more information on that she hired you after all I haven't talked with her in decades last thing I said to her I best not repeat it here but let's say we're not on good terms she was the one who shut down my research in necromancy so she, she was, was leading something like that. She was also the one who believed in you and no one else would. She doesn't like say anything to that. What changed? The war. Left a lot of us hurt, traumatized, scared, making rash, stupid decisions. Like implementing laws that prohibit necromancy. She just kind of like, while sipping the mug, like the other hand just pointing to you and nod. So is that what you ultimately disagreed on? That it was too drastic on the show? Well, I thought that it was going to restrict me in what I was trying to do, which was learn more about it and maybe perhaps invent a few ways to help the lost. And how did Chandra feel about your practices? Obviously, publicly, she disavowed them, but personally... I don't, I don't rightly know. It's been so long. What I do remember of the chat was... She was very saving face. She didn't want to show any emotion, being all the general's favorite, trying to appear as such a strong, stoic leader that she is. She was incredibly cold towards the end of the war. Yes, I can see. Mm. I, no. I think I've pretty much covered a major part of why. Thank you. I appreciate your insight. I'm pretty sure my friends here will have a lot more questions, but the second... Kara, could you give me some guidance on this measure? I have a personal friend I want to ask about, and... Well, spit it out. (laughs) It's difficult because it's not normal for me to discuss feelings like this. I have a friend named Mirth who came here shortly after I had met them. They were going to be my princess, but I foolishly at the time did not realize that the mistakes that I had made drove them away harder. And I want to apologize, and I know how I want to apologize, but how how do you make it right? She l- l- puts down her mug on the table and seriously considers this question. And she stares off into the distance. It's a sad reality that sometimes you can't. Sometimes your mistakes will stick with you forever, and you have to live with it. You may try to reconvene and fix the problem, but you must accept that even with the greatest tools, you may not rebuild that bridge. And at least a single tear just kind of makes its way out. And I thank you. Thank you. All right, who's next? Witch taker. I'm right. sure you've got a million things to overanalyze. Oh, how clever of you! And take an investigator that has to ask questions and 
chastise them for asking questions. I'm sure that we could have a pleasant drink together, but for now, work. <clears throat> what happened to your research when you left? Did you take it with you, or did Chantrell have it? I did take it with me. I sought to teach and train in a new generation of necromancers to mine own ends. Seeing as you have a majority of my notes, you may see that I've done some questionable things. Oh, yes. Well, questionable is not the word I would use, but regardless. And in that, does the name Pierce Bloodstride mean anything to you? <laughs> she, like, chokes on her, her drink a little bit. <laughs> oh, that bodes well. Oh, that bodes well dear. when it makes you spit up your drink, so... Yeah, no, please go into that. Is that what he calls himself now? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just all offer her a I'll just call him that's just Ronan, not but that's on me. fucking name. Fuck it's calls for Pierce. I'm just gonna give her a napkin. <laughs> P.S. Is she takes it from you without like, uh, just like without hesitation or losing stride at all and just like dabbing her mouth. P.S. was his middle name. <laughs> okay. And he was one of my what finest is... students. He wanted to, he came long after I stopped researching True Resurrection and insisted on continuing the siphoning project. He was very upset and naive, that boy. I know that he's one of the main people behind the spine of death, but I've decided to stay out of that and whatever goes on in that bloody country. Well, the thing about that bloody country is that it's going to kind of try and fuck up this bloody country. And like, this one's already fucked up. He's just trying to like reinstate the chaos that kind of came with the world. Yes, he just nearly tricked a group of people into setting loose a Warforge army upon Cloveway. He also tried to convince a group of people to try and join him uh, in necromancy. I think he's trying to build himself a group of people who believe that violence is the only answer. And he's also kidnapping young. children. That's also happening. Yes. He really is the worst. What was his name? Well, his Love original it. name was Laszlo Dungbite. <laughs> <laughs> Laszlo oh Pierce Dungbite! Write that down, write that down! Dungbite. Laszlo Pierce Fucking Dungbite. Camp Laszlo! <laughs> That's all that's going on in my head. It's the only thing. I don't know if that's how you spell it. I can't. (laughs) Immediately, immediately, just art of the entire party laughing as Kara is just sitting there with their drink. I no, but Renee would probably just kind of. I see why he changed his name now. My face betrays no emotion. Fucking Laszlo of all names. That's worse than Pierce. Worse Look. than blood stride. What the I, fuck? <laughs> Never. Mind. I feel like okay. we're Continue. honing on the wrong I'm thing here. Well, yeah, we're hyper focusing. Back to the topic. Right. Well, Laszlo seems to be using your name to wreak all of this havoc. I imagine that that is publicly why we're on this mission. Well, the mission isn't public, but I imagine that that's why Chandrel felt no le- need to elaborate. Hmm. Did she know him? Chandrail? No, I've not spoken to her in many decades. Okay, so that came out of the after. Okay, just trying as to fa- get my timeline here. As far as we are aware, Pierce is using a portal, a pocket dimension that he hides all of his necromancers in, including our friend Mirth. Apparently only a very powerful necromancer is capable of opening this portal. She just like rubs her. She just like uh, pinches her nose a little bit. Oh, he was a good student. Yes, I developed some very special dimensional magics in my time learning about siphoning. It was a recreation of something that I made for the war, but tried to expand upon it. It seems that he may have learned a little bit too quickly. Would someone as powerful as you be able to try and um, perhaps decipher or conjure up the, the magic that would... Uh, Not unless I've been this? there myself, no, unfortunately. Ah. What if we know someone who's been there before? Would that help? Perhaps, but I don't know if you've got any friends in the spine of death. And, um, not, not really a friend, but someone who could help. No. Well, then we may have a chance to stop them yet. I still have a couple of questions, of course. Chandrel had tasked us with finding you, and in lieu of actually defeating you, we were to use one of these. 
I'm gonna take one of the Pokeballs. She gonna... slams her mug on the table. I made those. Oh. Those are mine. She wanted to wow, use my own the... mute crystals against me. They're quite effective. Of course well. they're effective. I invented them. Well, you did a fantastic job. Which leads me into my next question. We've only ever managed to use one of these, and it was on a creature I believe you will have a lot of history with. The rampaging monster known as Thorn. Yes, and I'm sure it worked swimmingly. She takes I another mean, sip of her mug. It held him long enough for us to get away. What do you mean long enough? The mute crystals keep them in there indefinitely. It yes. did not fall them. That's impossible. Nothing very... alive could break out of those things. I'm Maybe not, not convinced alive. that what it is is alive. What, uh, what this creature is, I'm not sure it, you can call it alive or it's an experiment, but it come, it descends from the sky like, like a meteor, cuts everything down in its path and takes off again. Wait, you truly do not know what this creature is? She for once has surprise on her face and turns. No, I thought it was simply some angry adventurer or mercenary hired to kill necromancers. Someone strong, someone powerful. Have you never encountered them before? I've avoided them at every chance. They're extremely efficient at their job. I was oh, going to say, um, do, uh, pencil and paper, maybe? Um, just, I, I want to sketch out the armor. Like, if, if Kara is doing everything to avoid it and has never actually seen Thorn... <laughs> Oh, I've seen I've seen them before. You've seen them. Okay. Okay. I've made no, battle with them, there, but they are far too strong. My only goal when encountering anyone is to protect my people, protect the necromancers. Did it fight similarly to something you've seen before? No. I simply assumed that it was someone from the east or another kingdom. And you are absolutely sure that it has nothing to do with anything you've researched. The she looks down a siphoning. moment. In pursuing true resurrection, I've learned a few things. In attempts to cast them on someone, it brings them back but briefly before turning them into a monstrous abomination. And usually they are deformed, not retaining their original shape. Whatever this thing is, it's humanoid, and whoever brought them back must be someone incredibly strong. That only leaves two possibilities. Well, no. One. And what's that, Nathaniel? I had two theories. The first was that perhaps Chandrell had something to do with the creation of Thorn. But given that Chandrell needs you, Kara, I imagine that she doesn't have the necrotic capabilities to create a monster such as this, leaving only appears, Bloodstride. Then it appears... My little blood stride has surpassed me. So it would seem. Does the shop have tea? Yes, it does. Priscilla! It, no. And Priscilla comes back. Yes, uh... Nathaniel? Ah, wonderful. I, I switch immediately to, like, the very comforting voice. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it's wonderful yes. to see you. Would you be uh, a dear and any tea that you can find, I would love uh, here. And I'm going to reach into my pocket and I'll flick a gold her way. Okay. Well, I won't like flick it like, go get it. Right, right, right. I'll, like, I'll make sure <laughs> she can get it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she'll, she'll bring back some various different uh, brews for you to choose from. Aww. I am going to mull this over. Luna. Uh, actually, can... when, you flick, when you flip her the gold, she simply hands it back to you and... Uh, Kara just speaks up. Oh, we don't use gold here. Uh, There's no payment what? necessary because this is such a small community. Everything is run community. We can't afford to try and make profits off each other. We're barely keeping ourselves alive. I see. Well, thank you. And I'm going to nod at Priscilla, and then I will say as I was saying. Right. I'm going to mull this over. Luna, you had questions. And also, I think your little friend over there... Wait, actually, Renee, did you take the the notebook in the chest, or you just took the locket? I mean, I took the locket out. I would assume that Renee grabbed the, the notebook afterward. Okay. Like, after all the things have started to calm down. Right. You know? Like... 
It seems your little friend over there was so busy snooping through my things. And perhaps you could find a few more clues in those notes. But like shit, Brene kind of shrugs. Like I mean, it well, it's a journal in hand. Ah, he writes. He hands it over to Nathaniel. Yes, right. yes, I hold. Oh, so I hold it up. The sun beams down upon it. <laughs> da 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 da. da. Oh, anyway. God. All right, of course, but I, I will take it. And as I lean back and allow Luna to Do speak, take I am flipping care, through this fucker. Taker. Those are very private. And don't look too far into them as far as psychoanalysis. Oh, of course not. I wouldn't want to psychoanalyze mind is anything. Like a steel trap. And tell me, are there any more pictures of Ninja Abby? <laughs> she just squints at you. <laughs> Listen, they were really good drawings. Yes, I especially enjoyed the way that she managed to find your journal every time. <sighs> not the best thing to remind the woman. So we've got, we've got a washed up follower of Erethus. Not washed up, I'm very alive. A strange investigative man who uses enchantments like it's a, like his people are playthings. And you, she just points at Renee. Well, I don't know who you are, but you're a bard, so you've probably done something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple ah, times. Too. That's fine. Oof. And you, you stink of a raven queen. I. Yeah, that's a long story. Kind of like, uh, I still have a bottle of wine. I'm going to crack that open. Yeah. As, as you're opening that, it's like, I guess it is still a time, so. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I. I suppose. A story for a story, then? You said that it was a long one for how you ended up in a church for the Raven Queen. The high priest of one, no, no less. That mm -hmm. is a far cry from what. Does she not abhor necromancy and undeath? Well, she does. It doesn't take a high bishop to know that tampering with the bodies of those who have passed may upset a certain figure whose job it is to ferry the souls to the afterlife. And so I spent many years after stuttering, after finishing my studies for true re resurrection, trying to repent for my sins against death by paying tribute to the Raven Queen, making rituals, offerings, shrines, the usual deific sort. Because when I leave this world, I'd rather my soul not be shattered into a million pieces because I pissed off the Grim Reaper. I believe she's been leading me here, and not for the purpose that I initially thought she was. Hmm. It's a very long story, but the easiest way to say it is that my father was a soldier in the war, and his platoon was on the verge of dying and she appeared to him and made him a deal. And I was the result of that deal. Hmm. That is very strange. The Raven, the Raven doesn't Queen. doesn't take mortal champions, I know. No, she doesn't even have followers, or at least she didn't, not until now. And that's, I think, why I was so confused seeing a church of hers here. The most I've ever been able to see really has been a sad, neglected altar in Chester City with one follower who also followed necromancy. Hmm. Well, that tracks. As the rise of n tension against the necromancers has risen, so too has followers of the Raven Queen. What do you mean? Well, if any of us religious lot would be put to some sort of reputation as being sinners all the time, I would assume that normally most of us would probably try to absolve those sins, yes? Yes, I suppose so. Enoch stares down at his drink viciously. I, I'm, more, I'm even more confused. Well, it sounds like it's a little bit of people following goddess of death to go against death magic, people who are using death magic and then trying to absolve themselves from the goddess of death. It is like just a whole intertwined web of just gray area. Well, if I'm you not can too far off. I don't know what I can help you with, but I have talked with her once, briefly, 
decades ago in a musty old tomb that was not marked on any map. What did she say to you? She told me what she wanted. She wanted shrines. She wanted all these things that all the other gods got that she never did. I assume she wanted to see what it was like and as payment for all my discrepancies against her. And so I founded the town of Cloveway, that others may do the same. I've... I've been hearing her in my head for the past few days. It's never anything... It's not anything that, uh, that, well, obvious. She's not telling me any direct course of action. She's just saying to keep going. I'm doing well to keep going. And I thought that she was telling me to go to Cloveway because necromancers. But I'm not sure that was her intention for sending me here anymore. You can see her looking at her mug, just like tapping it with like her bony finger a little bit, and it takes her a long while to respond. Well, I don't know what any of that means. I don't either. Insight. All right, give me an insight. (laughs) Yeah, I think Luna's too dumb to insight this, so uh, have fun with that. Oh shit! We only roll twenties in this house. (laughs) Always roll a natural twenty on it. This is payback. What the fuck? This is payback for all of last session. She's absolutely (laughs) hiding something. Good. (laughs) She is. The pause. She's got. She's trying her best poker face, but you can tell that there are some very slight subtleties that uh, she has ideas um, as if she, yeah, she knows something, basically. Uh, She's not letting it all out. In that case, uh, once she says that, I am going to repeat back to her in Abyssal the thing that she said to everybody else as we exited. I can't remember the exact wording, but. Oh, yes. Uh, The Raven. The Raven Queen, yeah. The Raven has its children at the shore. Yeah. The raven has its children at the shore. Oh, you know Abyssal, congratulations. And you know the Raven Queen more than you're letting on. Congratulations. Luna, hearing that, she'll just look at her. Listen, I know this is a lot to ask. I know. And under normal circumstances, I wouldn't. But you want to be a priestess of the Raven Queen? Yes, well, I am one of her children, and I am lost, and I don't know where to go. Please. She looks down at her mug. Listen, even if I wanted to, do you have any idea what channeling requires, how much power it needs, and time, and preparation? It seems like you do, which means perhaps you can do it for us. And why would I ever do that? Because we need time to recover from you kicking our asses. Well, on a much more reasonable note. What about a favor for a favor? And what favor could you offer me? seems like your god needs more protection. I don't hold myself to whatever Belkinus' standards are. I go where I can to find work. That just happens to be in Belkinus. A competent Coffee. sword on your god? Give me a persuasion check. Urgh, that's gonna go bad. Okay. Let's you can do it. <laughs> no. get, get that 20. Get that in that 20. Mm. Oh, you got it in the wrong spot. Oh, almost. Okay, still an almost. 18. An 18. 18. (laughs) I don't know why I had You can see her darting her eyes back between you and the mug um, that her her once poker face is waning a bit, um, you know, seeing as that she is not so easily able to keep it up in the presence of somebody who can see right through it. I'll think about it. And while you're thinking on that, perhaps think on this for a moment. You're a very smart person. Which means that we're going to come to the same conclusion that you need our help. Your town is struggling, as you have admitted. And the more that Bloodstride wreaks havoc across these lands, the more people are going to dislike necromancers and are going to, perhaps, march here. Already the people that guard this place are so wary of outsiders. I don't know if in your current condition you would be able to save them all. But perhaps that's not necessary. All you have to do is get us to Bloodstride. She puts both her hands on the table. Very well. I will go to Belkinus with you. I might be able to actually help with something about that, but I'll wait. I'll have to get some things 
and you will have to get some things for me. Like? Confidential things. Ah, okay. Fun. Uh, uh, after kind of sitting and nodding. Well, then it seems like there's a lot to discuss. Yes. All right. Well, then. We should make preparations to leave. I'll be like. saying my goodbyes, getting things in order, and we can talk about the finer details of our plan when we leave. Here, and she just hands out an, uh, a piece of parchment uh, that she kind of, you see a little conjuring from her fingers, from her bony fingers that lead into the parchment and form various different symbols uh, on the piece of parchment and hands it to whoever it will take it. I take everything. Yeah. <laughs> there he goes. This is the paper Nathan man. Nathaniel's the bookkeeper. I know how paper works. There's a, the smith in town. He'll be able to provide me with those materials. And don't look at them. I give Nathaniel a look. Of course not. His name is Grammel. He'll be able to provide what you need. Grammel. Just to clarify, this mm -hmm. paper is folded up, and I'm not supposed to look at the ingredients that are on it. Uh, they have. S it's not folded up. It's a normal, simple piece of parchment with symbols, various symbols that look like indescribable nonsense shapes. I see. Understood. Okay. Her instructions to not look into it uh, is more referring to the items that you are going to get. That makes Don't sense. look at the death books. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is there anything you lot need before we leave town? I'm going to be a couple of hours, so you'll have plenty of time. So we're leaving right now? Yes, a right few. now. Or would you rather wait for Bloodstride <laughs> to no, no, take a bit more the, time I in just... his conniving? <laughs> that's it's the not word. that we'd just... rather wait, it's that two of us are nearly dead. No, we I'm should leave immediately. I'm dead, I'm okay now. Oh, yes, rest. Hmm. I think that we should leave immediately. I'm gonna have, have to have... agree on this. So. Well, can can you two at least sit down for an hour and just, I don't know, mandage your wounds? We'll ah. just have to take a certain path back to uh, the city proper, if only because I will be having a traveler join us. Who? Uh, just like, like <laughs> You can me, see Francis is at another I... table, just like kind of, <laughs> trying to not look conspicuous, but just like oh. leaning like, in to try and eavesdrop. Con oh, considering hello. that <laughs> Yeah, she decides like considering that we aren't apparently going to die immediately right now, this is my like she just gestures over to to um Francis to bring him over get, get over here. Yeah, he, he leans <laughs> in. <laughs> hello, I am Francis. It's very nice to meet you all. Have you been listening in on this conversation this whole time? You don't no. need to be mad at him. He is my brother, okay? Okay, yes, a, nice. a bit. But I only heard muffles uh, here and there. My hand twitches. <laughs> <laughs> and let me show the picture of him nice real quick. You him. Renee. I promise <laughs> I will be as a mouse, out of your way and small and quiet. This is your... My little brother. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and make no mistake, I am good in a fight too. I can defend myself. Haha! -ha, and he You're goes to like reach for an empty dagger. <laughs> she just like, I'll do, let's not do too much just yet. We're not planning to to fight anything immediately. I'm not planning to fight anything immediately. I'm always ready to fight some. No, we are not fighting anything immediately. And right now, we are going to try our best to stay out of trouble. May I ask one more question? And it's more about your research than anything. Go on, I'm sure there are going to be plenty more on the trip. It was about a specific line about resurrecting war heroes. Yes, that they are more potent. They usually last a little bit longer. However, their st strength usually means they're harder to control. And what happens when one gets out of control? Well, they usually transform into an abomination, as with most of our subjects. The fact that this one, whatever it is, this thorn, is able to maintain its shape as a humanoid is a miracle. Luna's just gonna stand up and walk out of the tavern for a second. <laughs> she needs a, needs a minute. All right, so again to process that bodes well. Yeah. Anybody else have any 
further things to ask Kara. I will say there are more Not chances. Not Francis is here. <laughs> there are more chances to ask her things on the way, as she said. Uh, I, I, I would ask about the arm. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're gonna ask her about her arm. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm, a, I'm. I'm curious as to that with what happened to you. Oh, seeing as you've got a prosthetic of your own, I thought you'd figure things out. Um, you see, siphoning has its own drawbacks and side effects, and doing so much can oftentimes lead to certain things not going right, we'll say. Well, I, I ain't never done no siphoning, but, uh... Oh, but you've done experiments, haven't you? No! Uh, I lost my arm from a pirate that tried to sell me into slavery. Oh, please. I know you've done a few inventing, and you've got some scars from gears that have gone haywire. No one's too. Oh. No one's that careful. You'd be surprised. You gotta have steady hands if you're gonna put these on other people, really. Very well. But uh. yes, I've been a little bit malformed since my siphoning, but it has afforded me more powers and helped me make the town what it is now. Well, you did something good. I wouldn't say it was good cost many lives. Many innocent lives. It is a start. The way it's going to end, I don't know. But it is a start of something. I'm gonna slide out of my seat, stand up, and I'm going to say, I'm going to get all of the materials that you need. I am very happy to have met you, Carr. And I'm sure that we're going to have plenty to talk about on the road. Hmm. I give a bow, and I turn and walk away. All right. And there he goes. For the record, Luna is just standing outside the tavern door. She's not far. All right. And with that, uh, Kara gets up as well. I'm going to go tend to some things before our trip. All right. You all can find me outside the chapel when you're ready. And you, she sorry. starts to walk out, but um, stops for a bit. Oh, and um, for the damages and she waves her fingers around a bit, and every single one of you, um, because you are still within a close enough range, <gasps> Mask your wounds. Mask your with, uh, with your next short rest, you uh, will now double whatever your hit die rolls are. Ooh. Oh, okay. oh my god. I was so wrong, I was so wrong. That's mean. I mean, that's great. That's really, that's really dirty. good. You guys can uh, do any preparatory things. Now, no tail is in the town. If there are, if you would like to buy any of his items oh, off of him. I'm, I, I love this man. Immediately I going to him. no tail. No. Uh, <laughs> the stock is still oh the same stock as last time since you guys did not buy anything of note off of him last time, aside from the usual common stuff. So. Well, while people are considering what they're gonna buy, can I talk to Luna? Uh, I was gonna do was... that. Sorry. You know what? You I'll, I'll, I'll go. Yeah, I'll go get stuff. I'll go get yeah. stuff. Yeah. Fine. You can have the I'm fun sorry. Luna conversation. You we can still join us. You can both have no, a Luna it's conversation. Right. It's you okay. can both have one. You can join us. No, only two people at a time. That's how no, feelings join jams us, works. You coward. I, no, I'm saying that like you can have one after if you want one. I'm gonna. I, I'm, I'm going for the things. Uh, I I <laughs> enjoy I your am character development. To no tail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, let's I, let's roll initiative to see who yeah. does it first, since we've done. Yeah. We, we're doing some slight party yeah, splitting. Yeah, there we go. So it's just yeah. a straight d20. Yep. Okay. So actually, Renee and Luna, since you guys are both talking uh, to each other, I'm gonna count both your initiatives. So once it goes to Enoch, so it's just gonna go like this instead. Okay. So uh, yeah, Renee, you see Luna right outside as um, she's like yeah. sitting with her back against the tavern, uh, with like a head, uh, her head in one of her hands, and she's just staring out at the town. Glad to see you're not swinging a sword around to process now. Is this progress or is this not this so good? Or are you just not swinging it around for the sake of the people? I don't exactly want to show my think, make them think I'm a threat. No, no, very much so. That would. Besides, probably be detrimental. So it's the last time. The last time weird things happened. I'm not sure I'm going to be sparring with the Echo for a while. Why not? Because I keep hearing that damn god in my head. Ah. Uh, yeah, no, the bird lady. I heard that that's kind of 
what's been going on. How long has that been happening? The voice in my head? Yes. I... Since... Uh, the first time it was when they were in the... the Temple of the Eternals. I've never heard uh, her voice. I've... Maybe... F I, I've never felt pulled by anything until all this happened. Is it... Skelly? I it mean, of course it is Skelly, but... I mean... Feels like everything I've been fighting for. Every decision I made in my life is being taken away. Or oh, counterpoint. If I could play the advocate for a moment. Go for it. Every decision that you have made has been leading up to this moment. It has not been taken away from you. You still had your authority to do that, to whatever you were doing. Maybe it was just that you were preparing yourself for what was ever coming up next. Not really sure how fighting monsters, fighting animals, is preparing me to. I don't even know yeah. anymore. I would say it's the baby steps. You never start learning magic by trying to do the most powerful spell, do you? No. You start off with the, the, the little things. Projecting your voice, so you start uh, looking at spells, you collect your components, you start off small, you start doing the little things, and so you build up one by one. Is that how you started? Yes, in a way. Um, as, as soon as I was able to start training uh, in magic, I, I went off and studied. Can I practice by myself and learn to be better? Learn to be able to become that person who could make that influence on people. Can I ask you something? Yes. Why didn't you follow your father? What happened? What time? I need to, you to be a little bit more specific. Are you talking about when? Um, when he you put he said he put him in jail, didn't you? Ah. Uh, I. Now we're getting to it. Okay. I've been. I won't lie, I've been curious, but that's not exactly something I've wanted to pry about, especially with how uncomfortable you seem to get every time necromancy's brought up. It's not something I want to keep shoving in your face. It's a little bit late for that, don't you think? I mean, just gestures at this huge <laughs> town full of necromancy. Yes, but I can at least try not to be part of it. <sighs> as much as I appreciate that, I've been learning a lot about you, Enoch. Things like that on this trip and for once it is nice to actually just talk about what has happened it's been a while and now with all this crazy shit of putting everything into perspective it makes it a little bit harder not to want to if that makes sense it's really strange Linda's gonna like scoot over and pat the ground beside her and kind of like shake the bottle of wine Oh yes, no, we're <laughs> taking that bottle. Oh yeah, not even, not even like second guessing it. Taking the bottle, taking a swig, and then sitting. Um, you don't yes. have to tell me anything you don't want to, but yes, my father was in jail for necromancy. Um, when what the what age was I? It was. Some time ago, I was maybe just over the cusp of maybe 18, 18, somewhere in there. It's not something I dwelled on. Um, I did, I did best of all. He had also fought in the war and lost someone precious to him. And as much as he tried to, I guess, move on from it, he couldn't. It sat and it festered and it lingered until one night. Uh, I wandered into, I believe it was the kitchen. And um, it was late at night. And 
So the, the moon was full, I think, because the moon was, the, the, the horn was very bright, even though it was so, so late. He had been studying on his own, but he had tried to do the magic that was far beyond his capability at that time. And he had tried to return the person he had lost to him. It didn't work, obviously. Someone like Karol Miharian, who's, who's been trading for centuries, has not been able to crack it. Him in a couple of decades? Eh, probably not. But um, that was that was a sight to see. I'm I'm so sorry. Yeah, he. Like, she, had, she was gonna try and start brushing it off. I'm like, ah, don't worry about it. But now she's like, yeah. Lynn is just gonna, like, like, put her her hand on your shoulder. Just gentle pat, like, um, on the, her hand. Like, they, like as, as a small thing, so like, yeah. Yeah, pat, pat. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. All right. You guys have a pleasant time opening up. Yeah. Finishing off the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Finish off the bottle. That's exactly what we're doing. Wine. I'll it say, was like I think a, it was like a third of the way full. So I, I, I say that's uh, that's good to move to yeah, Enoch. Absolutely. So Enoch, you're gonna go to No Tail and you're gonna buy some things. Uh, if if you're Sell just going to buy things, I think I'll let you do that in the background. But uh, is there anything with No Tail specifically that you mean to do? besides buying or selling things. Uh, nope, that is just pretty much it. Sell okay. and buy. All right, well, I, you have the list. Um, I, you can... I, I specifically want one thing, and that's it. Okay. Out of curiosity, what are you buying? Uh, the Ring of Haste, but first oh. I gotta sell these boots and also this green gem that uh, is the one that like I thought I could put into Kuro, but it's not gonna work. Right, okay. All right, well, you can uh, put those, and I'll calculate the cost that, uh, the, the money that you'll receive during break, because we're coming up on break time soon. Yep, uh, that's all I want, and all I want is the Ring of Haste. Okay, awesome possum. So, uh, Davy, you're up. Yeah, Davy. Uh, we can go to you then. So you head on over. The Smith's Hut is very easy to find, as it is a very small town. And you walk inside, and you hear a grunt <clears throat> from, uh, kind of like, what seems like it's trying to be a greeting uh, from you can see a goliath in the back that is just banging away on some materials and let me find his portrait it is Shoop. there he is you see there's a large goliath man kind of in the back uh, behind the counter just banging away ah <laughs> uh, yes I'm here on a uh, quest from Kara uh. here Short quest. He hands up, he, he puts out his hand expectantly. Order. I take or I hand him the note. He looks at it and he kind of turns it various different ways as if he's reading it in like a circle. Hmm. Priestess is going on a trip. I say nothing. Hmm. He drops his hammer on the anvil. You hear a loud king. He heads into the back room. You hear a little bit of rummaging, and he brings out kind of a small uh, backpack-looking kind of leather backpack with magical runes enchanted, like, on the buckles, kind of very briefly as he's moving his hand around to put them there. You can see that uh, his offhand has black veins all the way going up his arm. Okay. And... He puts it on the table for you. Mm. Hefty trip. Wonder what it entails. Yes, oh, it's going to be quite uh, extensive. You have everything here, right? Yes. Right, good. Out of an abundance of caution, could you just detail the things that are in here, just so that I'm aware? No. Damn. Uh... Why are you interested? This is Priestess's order, is it not? 
simply curious. I'm going to take the bag. <laughs> All right. Are you are you going to try and are you actually going to try and figure out what's in the bag though? Uh, I, I will like shift it around, but she said not to look in it. So I'm gonna like yes. shift it around. I'll, I'm, like obviously, I'm not gonna do it in front of this guy. Right, right. right. As like, you leave, you yeah. shift it around, uh, and it feels as though there is a little bit of clacking, like of something kind of heavy in there. Not extremely heavy, of course, but it's something heavy for its size. The size of it is like about the half the size of your torso. It's a fairly small backpack, very easy like carry on. Um, but yeah, inside oh. you can hear like like kind of shuffling about. You can hear some clacking of some kind. Do I hear the trostling of bones? Uh, no, you don't. You can actually your passive investigation would probably give you a good idea of what this clacking sounds like. It sounds like jewels. Oh, oh, okay. That makes sense. I'm not gonna look in because I don't know what eldritch horrors will befall me if I do. <laughs> uh. Never know, this well, might be from the same domain as the stick of stickiness. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that alone, but I have the bag, <laughs> and so with nothing left to do, I am going to go to Kara immediately. Make a beeline over there. Mm, you're not gonna talk with Luna first? Uh, Lu Renee's got Luna. Okay. We can talk later. All right, all right. Yep, you make a beeline to Kara. You can see that she is saying some goodbyes and giving instructions to, ver to the various guards, including... Uh, Kaime, who eyes you coming forward and immediately narrows his eyes and gives a sour frown, which uh, Kara notices and she turns to you. Ah, you have my things. I do. Yeah, here you are. Yeah, thank you. Can I... Thank you. And you can see her take it and like it immediately pulls like her hand down like a few inches at the heft. She slings it around her back. You all will be all right. You should be fine. The enchantment over this place should keep out any wandering eyes. That's good to know. I didn't see anyone as they, I was walking. I don't think I'm being followed. Yes. If any spine of death comes within a few miles of this place, we'll know. And Kaime, what? while I'm gone, you are in charge. And Jacqueline. And she looks over at Jacqueline, who looks a little bit teary-eyed. I will be back safe. You can see Jacqueline is just sniffing, and they go in for a hug with each other. Nothing can happen to Kara now, because we can't make Jacqueline cry. Yeah, we can't make Which Jacqueline cry. Which means something cry. has to happen to Jacqueline. No. No, no absolutely <laughs> not. I will anyway. make the campaign right here. <laughs> As a player, worst case, rebound, but... Mm -hmm. She heads back to you, Nathaniel. Where are your friends? They should be here shortly. Very it well. seems one of them was cut up uh, quite a bit. Okay. Well, if everybody else is done with what they're doing... Um, I guess you guys can meet up uh, at the chapel then, yeah? I want to say one small thing Give me my gold. before everyone Go else is here. Oh, I never calculated I'm... the gold. God, fuck it. I'm I didn't give a... you any fucking gold <laughs> yet. You have to no, ask no, 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 no. I, I mean for uh, for Enoch. I am an idiot. Oh. I, I spent all oh, that time. Oh, you sold things. It's fine. That gold's not going to be relevant anytime soon anyway. I will do it, though. Okay. Figure it okay. out. I will do it. Sorry. Well, well when, when you do, also, uh, Ring of Haste. Right. Uh... Well, let's see. The Ring of Haste. Let me just make sure I remember what it does. I imagine it just gives you haste. For like, for what it, Ooh, that's uh, for a what it does. Spell, though. It is. Uh, that's, that's the reason why I want it. No, yes. The Ring of Haste does give you haste. Yes. Yes. I need that. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think uh, if you just look up the haste spell, that's basically what the ring allows you to do. Anyway, yes. I will give you all of that uh, sometime towards... You know, once the session is over, I promise it's not going to be relevant in this session. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about that. But yes, um, you guys make it to the chapel when you're all done with oh. your things. Wait, and right before oh, them. I think. Wait, yeah, there, there was a small thing yes. that I wanted to mention. What, what was the thing you wanted to mention? I'm right. getting ahead of myself. Yeah. Uh, sorry. So as Kara is, is moving with me, uh, I can look back at. Uh, God, I can never remember her name. Jacqueline? Yes, Jacqueline. Uh, and I will say as we walk, you two look well together. How did you two meet? She turns to you. What, What is it that you want to know for, witch taker? That is private business between me and my spouse, and not relevant to the mission at hand now, is it? Is it too much to believe that I'm simply making conversation? She squints her eyes. Yes. <laughs> Knowing your methods, 
It might be information that you might see beneficial for whatever it is that you have planned. Even if it might benefit me, I'm not willing to take that chance. Well then, I suppose that I shouldn't expect a letter when you invite people to the baby shower. If you choose to have one. She just gives you a strange look of disgust and confusion. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> she has no idea what you are talking about and actually, like, stops for a second. What the? Oh, the people of Belkinus are so strange nowadays. I've been gone far too long. No, just this one. Uh, is this what the children are like nowadays? <laughs> Refuses. <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. gosh. All right. Yes. So you guys meet up. If everyone is ready with their things. I may. have my brother. Like Pitt. Yes, Francis. <laughs> <I'm> Francis <laughs> is there with you. He still has his bus fare that you have given him. That he is ready. That he, he promises that as soon as you we guys make it to Chester to, City, yeah. he's going to take the first carriage to Ruggawood. And you will not be using that gold on anything else. No, I'm not going to use that gold for anything else. Good. Uh, Just squishes his face. <laughs> um, can I do a sword check real quick? What's that you can, David? you can do a sword check. It is still icy cold. Even the entire time you are at Cloveway. It is not stopped, and the, the very slight jitters still happen, you know, in various random directions. And it's very e easy to confirm that it jitters in any direction that necromancy happens, as you can see, like, a skeleton being conjured and a strong jitter in the direction, like, simultaneously as it's happening. Mm hmm Okay. Melinda's just being, per like, more quiet than usual as she's trying to pay attention to it, make sure it's not going to come flying out of his sheath and impaling a poor citizen. Mm -hmm. And you guys leave out of Cloveway and uh, do you leave leave on your horses? I know there's three horses and there are, let's see, five, and there's six of you now. Oh. Shit. That's, that's, well, that's double up. Two, that's, I was the only one say, riding solo. Yeah. Yep. I was, yeah. the, I was the only one riding so, solo, wait. so... Uh, no, no, you weren't. No, you weren't. Luna oh, wasn't. yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm, wait, I'm, so that means... I'm forgetting about Francis. That means... Uh, hmm. I will... Uh, as we get to the horses... Oh, Rene, would you mind riding with Luna? Uh, okay. Um, or perhaps Luna could ride with Enoch. Um, absolutely not. I drive my own horse, thank you. Mm -hmm. yes, then I'll us. ride with Enoch, and then Francis, you'll ride with, ride with Luna. I'll keep him safe. I, you know I will. So, um, where does that leave Kara? With me. What do you of think? Course. Oh. <sighs> <sighs> Fine. And you can see that she actually like is struggling to get on the horse. She like grabs oh. it with one hand and is like oh. trying to finesse herself. I'm, and <clears throat> I'm, I am absolutely going to like take like reach my hand out to give her something stable. She she bounces away. No, I've got it. I've got this. I just need good footing. And she falls on her butt. Blast it as she tries to get up quickly and brushes off her, her robes. Maybe she should ride with the actual cowboy. I could help uh, you up. It's how often do okay you leave? To... I've not, how often do you I've not done any case? mounts in a long time. You know it's okay to ask for help, Kara. She reaches up and kind of like goes past your hand, Nathaniel, and, like, grabs on your shoulder as leverage and just pulls you as she pulls herself up really sloppily, kind of throwing her chest and torso over the back of the horse and, fl like, fumbling herself into a seat behind you. See? That wasn't very hard. Shut up and ride. You don't have to tell me twice. Come on, horse. Yeah. Yep, you guys ride out. As night begins to fall, further away segment of Cloveway, and you can see that Kara is looking back, and she seems to, as though she's got her eyes locked on the town as you head back towards Belkinus. So, what is. What route are we taking, and what is the plan here? Yes, I assume most in there will not be happy to see me. Well, we can try to avoid the, the big cities, and what we can do is just walk our way, way around. It won't be great for sleep, but at the very least, it will prevent us from 
Running into anyone who would not like you. And do you oh. have a meaningful way of disguising yourself? I've not done many of those in a long time. I seem to be out of practice. How about a cloak over your head? Would that work? It might, but That's it also might draw different eyes. Anymore. Someone hiding their face clearly has something suspicious about them. Oh, mm. damn. You've just reminded me. Yeah. I'm gonna rotate yeah, the horse. Get your... yes. Yeah, I'm gonna rotate the horse back to the where I hid my clothes. <laughs> no, it's on the way. You you've not passed it oh, okay. up. It, it's oh, it's continuing good. on the way. Don't worry. But uh, you good. are able. I, I was about to say that you are able to <laughs> find <laughs> back the little rock that you hid it. And as you stop and get off a horse, you can see Kara is just a little confused. What what, what is this? I left something here. And I'm push the rock. Ah, oh, where I left it. Fantastic. And I pull out my coat, dust it off, flip it back, and r- unpeel. <laughs> what is that garish, bright outfit? I have been trying to tell him not to wear it, but you know, it's, it's, it's a look. It's a look. It's a thing. This is That's the reason uniform. why we can't hide during the night. This is why we call him the Banana Man of Belkinus. <laughs> Wait. Who calls him the Banana Man of Belkinus? <laughs> Someone calls him that. We do? <laughs> why would you call me that? <laughs> Me and my mother do. Why? Look at you. Uh, you. Yeah. F- you can yes. see Francis. Are you serious? Francis is losing it. He's a banana man of Belkinus. <laughs> what? <I don't> just... <laughs> sorry, I... sorry. Okay, so we're actually allowed to talk about it now. Oh, I, I fantastic. Don't... I don't understand this at all. <laughs> you don't have to. I. Do. What? I don't even look. <laughs> Like a banana. It's the yellow. Much. It's it's the yellow. It's, it's the brown. It, it, you look color. like a banana. It it's, is the I, fact that you are a fluorescent I mean, yellow man. I look like something, but it, I wouldn't say a banana. <laughs> it's the only thing that came it to my head when I was. It like to you. It's the perception of people okay, around you. Okay, to be fair, I always fair, thought that I something else. That. I was explaining to my mother a few things, and right. well, it was the only thing I could think of to describe you. I'm sorry, but. I don't understand how. I look nothing like... I mean, you bruise like one and you're bright yellow. What do you want from me? A lemon. A l- they don't bruise like you. <laughs> That's not accurate. <laughs> Luna is trying so hard not to laugh. Luna is probably struggling to stay on her horse because she's laughing so hard. Right. This what? is knee slapping Enoch just losing it. <laughs> Oh, I, found oh, I didn't want to be rude, but they kind of have a point. You can see I, that in in this discussion, in this uh, little shenanigans, you can see that uh, when no one's looking, you can see that Kara just has a little bit of a hand over her mouth. Yes, <laughs> progress. <laughs> uh, Nathaniel fails to understand that he looks like a banana and so thinks that all of you are idiots and then gets back on the horse. I mean, did you think anything else of me? I mean... It's not about what you think. It's about what everyone else does. Clearly he looks like a lemon. (laughs) Sure. Mark my my words, that will be one of your new titles. This is a new thing to worry about. Oh. All right, so well, yes, Nathaniel, you have your coat and hat back, well and truly yellow as ever. And about yeah. now, since you've, it's starting to get dark, as you have spent the majority of the day in Cloveway and, you know, figuring out this misunderstanding and prepping. And let me show the map, actually, of where we, we can plan, actually, where you guys plan to be. So I'd say you guys are about here. What route mm-hmm. do you wish to take? From here I forth. Go over this way direction. That's to Ruggerwood? Uh, I, I, I know it probably wouldn't I, be a good idea. We probably need to go just straight down and then send my boy on his way, but I don't like that because I don't want well, to. Well, my, leave, my question is is there anybody in Chester we're trying to pick up? Or. Because I, I remember Davy mm-hmm. saying something about wanting Ketrig in this, in this madness. But oh, I'm not sure was, if that, that was, was Davy or if that yeah. was. That was me just being nonsensical. <laughs> okay. Ignore that entirely. Yeah, that was memes. Okay. Okay, well, listen, it's memes. hard to tell with how, how hard yeah. Nathaniel fell for Ketrin, okay? I think, I think that we we'll probably need to head south. Um, yeah, just that with Penny. We just don't want south. to go through the jagged peaks again, I don't think. Yeah, no. Uh, it well, would take more time. It would take more time, but it'd be, um, it'd be off the beaten path. There's not a lot of people that trek up there. Yes, and but if... we would run into more towns if we go that way. Yes, that's true. 
Unless do we have through the back roads. Hmm? Do we have the resources to avoid cities altogether? If we're careful. How much water do we have? I have a sk- my water skin is about third of- well, uh, if we need that? water, then by all means, we need to go down to where the water is. Well, I, that I, is two days travel. Actually, uh, one day by horse. Yeah, we got a horse. Well, well, to be honest, if we just need water, I believe I might have something. If I wake up tomorrow, I could probably purify water and food. Uh, yeah, well, then I can certainly hunt us food. It's not hard. Yep, purify food and drink. No, no. right. Then so we, move south we don't have to worry lake. about water if we can get to a, a body of it quick enough. Renee, how yes? capable of you are you of delivering messages? Uh, at the moment, I can send. Uh, I can send three. Could you maybe let Scorpio you know I made it back into darkness? He's going to worry. Uh, right. Okay. So that would be one. Anyone else want to have messages? Nathaniel, fuck. We did not send the other message you wanted to send to Lothal. A uh, routine checkup will be good enough for now. Okay. So I, need to ensure that, I need to ensure that the former protectors have made it to him. All right. So that is two. I, I might want to inform Samuel. About my ret- impending return. Okay, and that is three. Uh, I'll turn behind me. And do you have someone that you would like us to send a message to? No, I, I said my goodbyes earlier. And okay. Renee, if it's too, if it's too much today, it's all right. No, you I don't can, have I, to. I, I can send them. It would be okay. It just, I, I won't be able to send one particular message so that we can get some help with the whole portal thing. Then disregard mine. You sure? Yes. My, mine is purely spousal worries. <laughs> you can uh, see a slight f- flinch from uh, Kara at that comment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, alright. Then, if you don't mind, I will save that for tomorrow if I have any leftover. One more day should be okay. Mm-hmm. So then I just don't want the idiot though. trekking out past the border by himself, so. Right, so, Samuel. Have I met Samuel? You have, yes, yeah, you at have. the very one beginning time. of the campaign. Yeah, I met him all of one time, so I should be able to send a message since yep. I've seen him. Okay. So, Samuel, uh, Lancel, and then a correspondent in Spain. Okay. And are you doing that? So, are you guys resting tonight? Are you going to try and trek the night? I think resting is probably an important thing because exhaustion levels are no joke, but that's just me. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, yeah, that is just you because I'm a spellcaster, so the first one won't matter too much. Uh, The first one will all matter to me. Please don't do that to me. But how many more days until we're supposed to be at Belkinus proper? Let's see. Uh, I got to count. Let's see. Session one was one night. Uh Yeah, I think. I think we're on day 10 or something. I think you guys are day, day nine or 10. Yeah, something so along those lines. Going into I really gotta. We stay that, we stay that I really gotta think back on like each session, and yeah. what rests this... you guys took. You have five more, and then the next morning you'll have four. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. In that case, we can afford a rest, but oh, not I... within Chester. Well, I don't want us going right into Chester. I mean, we can re- realistically, if I. I could probably manage to get us in without many eyes on us if I talk to Cena. This is not a good idea. One I don't mistake. Have to tell, I don't have to tell her why. But a one I'd mistake and everything is ruined. Well, well basically, then, then we don't. Then we, we don't. Sh- I'm just offering options here. We it's should okay. sleep in the forest. Fine. I don't mind that. Besides, we need to actually plan out our scale of how we're going to be dealing with this once we get to Belkinost. Yes, so what exactly is the plan when we get to Belkinost? That's... Well, let us us decide that while we are making camp for the night. Sure. Very well. Um, I guess if we're breaking down, then we'll go try to catch dinner for everybody. Yeah, alright. 
Yeah, are you actually going to try and hunt something? Probably, yeah. If we don't have all the all of our enough resources to, to go I'll around. I'll slap some bardic inspiration on you before you go hunting. <laughs> I have the means. I have the means. It's appreciated. All it's right. Appreciated. Yes. Please catch us something big. I don't think this. I I don't think that we'll be able to do very much with like a rabbit. I will do my best. You'd be surprised at what you can do with rabbit with some rabbits and vegetables and some water. Mm. Okay, so yeah, you may roll me a survival check while uh, everybody else is setting up camp and stuff. I swear everybody's going to be very disappointed in my survival skill. <laughs> at, a, at a certain point, I want to sit down across from uh, Bardic Cara. Yeah. Yep, you may use Bardic Inspiration. Is that a G8? <laughs> uh, everyone will, okay. everyone want to hangs out with the new cool NPC. Uh, okay. <laughs> 16. Sorry, I didn't mean to put Francis there. I meant to put him on. I'm trying to drag him on the map. Here we go. No, but I love him. <laughs> Keep him there. So the map. And <laughs> let me just put the new tokens. Actually, I have a new token for Kara since you guys made peace with her. Thanks to uh, <gasps> Kate. <gasps> is it just Ooh! her with the bow? What the hell is this? Oh, no. What is this? Let so, me see um, this art right oh here. Control Z. So Let's go. Here, here. I'm going <laughs> to show it. I'm going to show it. Look at oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> So really? <laughs> oh, what the fuck is this, so dude? This is, a, so th this is an anime trope um, where sometimes when characters are drawn far away in the background, they look kind of derpy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's it's called Me Meguka, uh, named after Mado Madoka. Become Meguka. Madoka Magica, yeah. So Meguka. Meguka. And uh, Kate decided, you know what? Since you guys are friends, might as well draw a derpy, funny, like, yeah, gremlin Maguka. Kara for this her. Hey, yeah. I love and appreciate you so much for this. Thank you for putting this in my life. <laughs> she Just put, put the pictures together. You've got uh, the boss when you beat them and the boss when you can play at them. Uh, yeah, let me, let me show Karmihar in. There we go. Yeah, yep. there yes. it is. <laughs> the, boss, the boss when you fight them versus the po boss when you have them in your party. Yes! <laughs> so tired of everyone's shit. I love this so much. I love it here. Yes, and Francis's token needs to be on the board as well. <gasps> yeah, where's My Francis? My beautiful boy. Where's Francis? Uh, sit across from you. That is right next to her. <laughs> here, let me also sit across from her. Oh my god, stop oh god. <laughs> that the whole woman. Jesus! She's right, in a right. relationship. You, you can guys. see. Also, she's not a fucking attraction. Give us a chance to breathe. I, you can see that uh, she at at getting close to her, she just kind of like shuffles. All right. She's clearly uncomfortable. Come on. See, I'm giving her the space she needs. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I find okay, and with a with a sixteen, Luna, you are able to find you know some stray rabbits and stuff around. When you bring it back, you can see that Kara is conjuring a few things, and she actually summons a few skeletons up to set up a little tent. What, a, what in the world are you doing? I'm setting up my sleeping place. What do you think I'm doing? If someone were to walk through these woods and see that, they would not be happy. Please. Cross the border of the land of necromancy. No one travels this area willingly. We are near an incredibly large city. We can't take those chances here. Enoch, you can set this up. She just like, put, kind of like, does a pushing gesture, and both the skeletons go back and bury themselves into the ground. Do I How do you come? Do that? I come back to this. <laughs> yes, you do. You do. You come and back. I, I, like, I, I give the like strange instructions. Like, okay, so where's the tent sticks? Where's the tent sticks? <laughs> Just, just hammering it into the ground. As I, I, I walk past Renee, um, I'm gonna like kind of give your shoulder a pat, cause oof. Yeah, no, like that was like Renee's a little bit tense. It's just like, mm. yeah. Renee, do you want to help me cook this? Uh, something to sure. get your mind off of other things. Sure. Yes. I know you said you didn't want rabbits, but. A couple of them. Listen, as long as there's a couple of them, I did, just didn't want you to bring back one rabbit. No, 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 no. You can see like Kara. She's gonna end up doing like the Samwise games you do here. Kara takes <laughs> note of your discomfort. Oh, I'm sorry. Did my skeletons make you uncomfortable? 
I mean, I've been around ne enough necromancy now to sort of just, you know, roll with it. But, um... You know, if we're going to go on this journey together, I can't have someone telling me not to use this and that when it's my most efficient spells. I'm not telling you not to use it. I'm just... Huh? Well, the same thing with Nathaniel in the sense of we are right next to a, a city that probably is not a big fan of necromancy. I personally am not a big fan, but I am... I, I know it's what to use, so... Oh dear. You have been so terribly alone. Mm. All the while, Kuro's just staring at the bone arm. Wanting it. Desiring it. <laughs> oh my god. Hmm. Do the skeletons start out in the ground, or do you evoke them when they return out? I if feel so, them you know that very down? deep. Sometimes they are in very difficult places, but with a strong enough conjuration, I'm going to have to dig them dig their way out. Hmm. And that's where Luna starts tensing up. <laughs> very interesting. There have Good been many... This, this realm has been around a long time. There are plenty of dead bodies lying around. Let's get this habit. So, uh, uh, okay. I, I finished setting up the tent. All right, so... Uh, oh, yes, that's right. You all have a moral problem with necromancy, don't you? It's not a moral problem. Uh, oh, absolutely not. Well, mine was sort of religious-based, but and also driven by an unbelievably strong and terrifying spirit. But uh, since that was exercised, not as much. No. How's my brother looking? Uh, you can see he's he is very uncomfortable with the energy yeah. that is at this campsite right now. She's, he's just like twiddling his thumbs and holding his tongue. He doesn't know what to say. He's like a he's like that kid whenever who when he's at your. Uh, the kid at the friend's place and the parents are arguing and he doesn't know what to say. <laughs> uh, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna walk over to him and I'll say, uh, Francis, was it? Uh, uh, yes? Come, we should go for a walk. Um, he looks to turn at, uh, turns to look at Renee. It's all right. And like, at that, yeah, and Renee, and I was like, it's okay. Uh, all right. Uh, you are Mr. Uh, Nathaniel, yes? Yes. You can call me Nathaniel or Mr. Gainsby or whatever you would like. As soon as Francis has turned around, like, Renee gives Nathaniel a look of, like, what you doing there, buddy? I give, like, I put my hand behind my back and give, like, a thumbs up where Francis can't see. Okay, just, good. Just, you know, I'm just trying to, well, yep. you'll see. You'll see very easily. Yeah, okay. And then we're, yeah. we're going to walk off into, to, in for... <laughs> No, we're not going too far, you know. Oh, just not too far? Gentle okay. walk. Kind of I weird. mean, like, when I say not too far, I mean, we're going to, you know, go on a little walk away from earshot, and we're just going right, to have a nice right, right, conversation course. somewhere else, but that doesn't have to happen right now. Yeah, right. this will be a little abstraction of that. All right. Yep, yeah. sounds great. At Kara saying, you know, the, you know, being uncomfortable, Luna, who I imagine is probably stoking the fire to get it hot enough to start cooking. It's not necromancy, specifically. At least not your kind. While you may have good intentions, other necromancers don't. And some of us may have just seen their callousness. Hmm. You would condemn the bad necromancers, huh? I'm not condemning you, but I think, considering two weeks ago my father's remains were used as a tool, I think I have a right to be a little uncomfortable seeing bodies appearing out of the ground. Oh, yes, and I'm sure the cows that you now wear as harnesses from your weapons are definitely very upset about their slaughtering and being used as tools, yes? It's not the same thing. Hmm. Of course not. Because they didn't consent to that like the people in Cloverway do. Exactly. Those cows were used as tools, just as, as many bodies are used as tools. And that doesn't make it right. Listen, I can't help what materials are usually used to make the tools I work with. I'm sorry, but... I'm also trying to show you what most of us are working with here. You've been out of Belkinus for a long time. Yes, and you give so much respect for the dead, yet are so content to allow a man to puppet the free will of the living. And she just kind of like points in the direction where Nathaniel walked off to. I would kindly ask you not, not oh, to. Oh, oh, you think- You wanna know what You I think it's think... wrong that I believe that's a problem? All right, you wanna know what? I think things are getting a little too tense. No, oh, let's have this conversation, shall we? The Witch Taker is a man who uses enchantments akin to mind control. Is that not right? He uses enchantments only when it's absolutely necessary. Hmm, of and course. And essential to the mission. 
Not far from a necromancer who is cornered and can only use the resources necessary around them. Yes? I understand that. But the reaction that I have to necromancy isn't something necessarily... I, it is not... I have been having quite a week with necromancy lately. And let me just say, I totally understand it now. My body still reacts to it a certain way. I cannot control it. It's similar to when someone yells at you when you're a child and you are not, you don't know how to react to it yet. You don't know how to comprehend how it's happened yet. And so then you, when you get older and so it happens again, you just have that instinctual reaction. It's similar to when an animal sees a, a hunter in the forest and has seen it happen before. They know to run away from it. That is just the reaction I have. Hmm. Very well, but you better not turn your noses at every little enchantment and incantation that brings up a skeleton. I'm working on it. And that goes for the rest of you. Especially with that man walking around, it seems you have no problem with. Just fucking scowl. At least the dead have face. no means of complaining. Mmm. You want to know what? And I really loud stick break from over where Luna is. And I immediately just like, you want to know what? Do you want to go for a walk? It's a lovely little night, and I would actually enjoy some uh, interesting company about talking about the moralities of necromancy and laws and all that stuff. (laughs) Would you like to just, you know, come with me? Just you know what? I think I will take a walk by myself. Thank you. Damn it! (laughs) She heads off into the woods. Enoch Into the woods. Taken. Come on. No, I, I'm not. Uh, there's only one person I really would with that in that context. But no, I'm just. <sighs> there's a million questions in my mind, and I feel like she has answers. That's fine. And we are starting. Strangely enough, usually I'm the one that's always starting this kind of shit, but I'm starting to see the flaws of me. I'm glad it's you. I'm glad you're finally seeing it. And I just go to throw the rabbit in the the pot. All right. And now, Nathaniel, you walk off with Renee's brother, Francis. What are you what are you talking about? Uh, all right, once we're sort of far enough away. It's a cold night. Ah, uh, yeah. I I uh usually don't travel in this part of the country uh without the cold. Yes, you are very far from home, I assume. What brought you to the Necromancer City? Oh, I, um, wanted to travel, kind of like René, and I got a little lost, kind of not like René, and then I found myself in a, an owlbear cave, and then I got mauled, and then some Necromancers found me. The people in Colve, they saved me and brought me back, nursed me back to health, including that mean lady, Kara. Ah, so you do not have the same predications about necromancers that most of our country has. Well, I I do have a beat. I was not there when uh, Luke did what he did. He did something awful, and um, René was the first one to see it. Uh, I was not there, but I was still very angry with him, but... Being with the necromancers, seeing them live their life, I'm starting to question everything. What we have been taught in school and what we've been taught by the people of Belkanus. You call him Luke. You and Renee are full blooded siblings. Yes. I I've do- never heard Ren- I have no love for that man, knowing what he did. It was wrong. And learning what I did from Clovewe. I can't help but be even more upset. They they do not use necromancy to bring people back. Yes, they use them as tools, but simple as tools. To bring them back is sacrilege. And that would go against the Raven Queen, or at least how they put it. The Raven Queen. Very good. Well, I am very happy to know that there aren't worries in your mind about necromancy as such. But... I'm sure after seeing Renee all this time, or after all this time, and seeing the situation that we are now in, you may have worries for her. A bit. 
but she's always taking good care of her- herself. She's mostly taking care of me. <laughs> That's good. And you feel she will be safe when you are off in Shasta City and then beyond? Oh, yes. Renee is an inspiration to me. She's my hero. I I wanted to be like her. I tried singing like her, but I couldn't. So I tried playing instruments instead. I still couldn't. So I'm trying to find that spark that she has that I just cannot find yet. But I will find it one day. My calling. My spark. I am going to stop, turn to him. I'll put my hand on his shoulder. This has been a very good conversation. And I'm certain that one day you will find that spark. Oh, oh is, is that all? I, I, I thought there was going to be more. Ah, I did as well, but after what you've told me, I no longer think that it's necessary. Oh. Hmm. Well, okay. I, Do you want to tell I'm me anything ha- about you, Mr. Nathaniel? I... What could I have to tell you? Well, these any gestures up and down at your outfit. <laughs> I love him. Oh, this. Sorry. Um. Well, um, when I first became the witch taker, it became necessary for me to be uh, noticeable, both as a means of, uh, uh, I suppose, publicity. If you know that the witch taker is in a big yellow outfit, then when you go searching for them, they're easy to find. It makes oh, finding jobs easier. That is easier. smart. And, of course, if you know the Witch-Taker is in a big yellow outfit, and you're on the run from the Witch-Taker, the color yellow becomes a bit more worrisome. Oh, intimidation tactics. It has its advantages. Of course, I am a little confused by the banana comments earlier. Do I look like a banana to you? No, I don't know what they're talking about. You clearly look more like a lemon. Exactly. I love, I love you. For, for the, perhaps the first time, Nathaniel like seems like someone connects. Like oh. yes, the lemon thing. Oh my god, it all makes sense. Exactly. No. I just, I this just is... didn't want to say anything because everyone was ganging up and it sounded funny at first. But looking at you, you're clearly more a lemon. Thank you. I am certainly a lemon. You can see he has a big, satisfied smile on his face. Well, I just wanted to make sure that uh, your thoughts were at ease. You seemed a bit uncomfortable. Perhaps moving you away from the situation would be best. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Nathaniel. Yeah, it's uh, just Kara. She's, uh, she likes to do that a lot. Um, yeah, no well, boundaries. I'm sure that she hasn't had many people to talk to on an intellectual level for a very long time given that she surrounds herself with skeletons. Regardless, I'm very happy with this conversation. We should head back. We can all yes. talk together and mull things over. Or uh, uh, smooth things over. Yes. Okay. This was a good talk. All right. And yeah, you guys head back to the camp. I, I had a whole speech prepared, and this guy, <laughs> he said... Yeah, I was worried that he was, like, really weird about everything. Every- oh, this is much more pleasant than what I had in mind. <laughs> Yay! I All imagine right. as you're coming back, we're starting to divvy out bowls of the food. Yeah. Oh. I'll, uh, and- I'll go let her know. Get her from where? She went on a walk. Just a short walk. My teeth clench a bit. Don't Alone. worry. I think that woman can handle herself. It's not handle. about handling herself. I just, Blast. I just turn coat and I start walking towards Kara. All right, yeah. She is a short little distance away. You can see her silhouette uh, pretty easily. And she seems to be squatting down on the ground, just like playing with a little skeletal bird just like kind of hopping about as she's kind of twisting her finger around puppeteering it and she doesn't turn to you she's kind of looking away from the camp squatting and here's you approach what is it food's almost done i just i want to let you know that From my perspective, 
my entire world and how I perceived morality was kind of shattered not too long ago. Which is why I began to question, you know, the voice in my head that told me that necromancy was bad, that it was amoral, it had consequences. And then, kind of looking at his arm, I found out a lot of lies had a lot of consequences. Hmm, welcome to the club. And then... I got asked on to this mission. And then I thought I had a focus on who to blame for so much damage. And then I was told everything was different. And then I realized Maybe somehow that you're not bad, you're just different. You can see she doesn't comment at that, but she. You see her shoulders slump a little bit as her playing with the skeletal bird stops, and she just kind of lets her hand go limp as the bones just kind of clatter to the grass. And she stands up and. Uh, kind of does another conjuring as the bones sink into the ground. She turns kind of in in a way so that she doesn't have to look at you. I'll go have that food now. Starts to head back to the camp. Hey. What? I have a plan. And it might be important that I want to let you know about it. That it's gonna ask a lot of your cooperation hmm. and honesty. Well, trust goes both ways, follower of Erethus. And you could always trust in my words because I'd never told a lie, and I haven't. I haven't started, and I won't stop now. So I will hold you to that. In the morning, I'm starving. She heads back to the camp. Fantastic. I could use a bowl of grub. But turn around. Luna will start uh, divvying it up. It's mm -hmm. not much, but my dad taught me how to make do with what I could find out here. And uh, everyone grabs a bowl. Uh, you can see that uh, Francis is digging in. He's getting in there. He's like, mmm, so good. Um, can I make a stupid roll? Sure. I want to insight this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, this is. I want to make a sleight of hand of like maybe handing the bowl. Like Renee pours a little bit more of her bowl into uh, Francis's. Aww. Oh. Aww. Are you trying to hide this or no? Yes, I'm trying oh, to hide Jesus, it so okay. Francis doesn't see. Ha <laughs> 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 ha. that's so pleasant. Can yeah, I? She just slips it. Can I? I, I, I never, I usually would never ask to do this because it's kind of meta, but could I roll a perception to see if I notice? Because New, Luna would do something cute for you. I don't give a shit, you. so. <laughs> Luna would do something cute for you. That's my only reason I'm asking. Probably got to be a Can no. Can we do consent? Yeah. I consent. It's fine. Right. Like, I'm totally fine with it, but it doesn't matter because you didn't see yeah. shit. I was too busy I didn't even notice it. I, I, stir, I was stirring the soup. It's fine. Oh, where's the spare bones? What? The bones from the rabbits? Oh, the rabbits, okay. They're in the, they were used to make the stock and discarded, mm. you know, okay. as you do when you're cooking. Where's the discarded bones? Why do you want the bones? Kuro wants it. Kuro is... Can he... I mean, she'll, like, point <laughs> no. off, like, because she would have, uh, she would have dumped the, the entrails <laughs> and, like, the stuff that's, like, you know, you don't eat out of the rabbit. Um, it's not sanitary. She would have dumped it a bit further away from camp to keep predators from coming in. So she'd just, like, gesture wildly off the map. Somewhere out there. You know, probably I built taken him by to another be animal. a dog. He's an actual dog, just not, you know, made of flesh and bone. He's just made of metal and magic. Well... Um, some actual flesh and bone creatures are probably making a meal of that right now, and I think it well, probably needs to return to the earth where it belongs. 
Well, I might want to get him a bone soon because he's been staring at Kara weirdly recently. Well, that seems like it's your job since he's your dog. If that, <laughs> if that mutt tries anything, I cannot guarantee its safety. Well, uh, it, you can you can break him. I can put him back together. He should be fine. Okay, no, that's how about what? you? Okay, okay, no. First, no. What? We're not going to let the dog bite her. That's <laughs> fucked up. Unless I tell him to, he won't do it. Well then, why are you acting like? <sighs> Never mind. Listen, it's just perception. You know, dogs desire things, and if you want to give it a bone, you give it a bone. You well, there's a very bone strange, off in that direction. You are a st very strange man to have constructed a homunculus that has its own desires. It is under your control, you understand. Oh, I I'm relatively sure, but in my mind, I've constantly perceived him as a dog. Wait, does he that mean that you want a bone? Maybe. Well, again, <laughs> and I point back in that direction. Bones that way if you want them. You are all It's not so much left of them, though. Strange. Rabbit bones break down quickly. Yeah. Well, as welcome he, to the Club of Strange. You could just see the little the little legs just go into the forest, come back with a mouthful of bones, and just drop them You can the see floor. She, she takes a few uh, sips of the, the stew and just, like, you can see her chuckle a little bit. I guess we're all a bit strange. Oh, yeah. I'm going I'm to take yet to one little... I'm going to normal person, if I'm honest with you. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take a little bit of the... Of the like a spoonful, ignoring all of this conversation about bones and homunculi, and that very worrying thing of I'm pretty sure that I can control this dog. I didn't miss it, uh, but uh, I'll, I will sit cross-legged, very calm, as I uh, sip on the on the soup. I'm gonna open up the journal because I still haven't seen what's inside of it. Yes, you find three more pages, and opening it up, you can see that Kara is just, like, turning her face, and she doesn't want to look at you. You can see there's visible cringe on her. As I... you find three more notes of Kara Miharian's journal. If there are oh, not oh, Abby Doodles yes. on this, I will Fantastic. be very sad. There need to be. Also, as I take a sip, ah, oh, good soup. <laughs> <laughs> good soup. <laughs> good soup. You can see that uh, 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 Francis as well is kind of like leaning in like by your shoulder to try and read like beside you. Oh, God damn. Will, and... I'm just going to turn my head directly at him. Francis. Oh, do you need something? Say again, Nathaniel. Oh, do you need something? Oh, oh uh, no. He just kind of like slinks back a little bit. Oh, I, I just was curious. That's all. Um, he just goes back to eating his soup. Oh, you know Francis, in the in ancient times, you on T were known to eat the captives that snooped around in places they shouldn't. Renee just rolls her eyes. <laughs> he he just looks around, darts his eyes back and forth at and looks at Renee. Is that true? Why do you think I never get into any trouble while he's around? Listen, I've seen it happen. It's very scary. He just <laughs> quickly, he just qu so quickly like butt shuffles over to Renee. <laughs> 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 like Renee just gives sort of like a knowing look and like a smile to Nathaniel of like, ha. <laughs> You and, could just uh, see nothing but, like, five frames <laughs> of him, like, moving and, like, spider crawling. Yeah. <laughs> and here, let me show you the first note. Yay! Yes. Oh! Oh. Stop it. My God. No, I don't want to read this. This is year 132, uh, spring. Okay, well, I will read aloud. Attempts at true resurrection have resulted in catastrophic failure. Though the subject seemed to maintain sentience for half a minute, the raised half-human, half-elf corpse quickly became unstable, transforming into a grotesque, decayed abomination with enhanced capabilities, albeit less durable than the average living being of their physiology. The subject was also unable to be commanded, resulting in the deaths of three mages and two civilians, before the subject was exterminated. Viscount Orion has established more strict policies as a result, which will most likely sh slow down our progress. I can only pray this will not happen again in the future. This... This is strange. You can Kara. see that uh, Kara is just kind of like playing with her bowl a little bit. There are a lot of problems. And a lot of 
unfortunate circumstances as a result of us trying to get ahead in the war. With that said, though, I'm actually going to turn the page, like, not, like, flip to the next page, but show it to Kara, and I'm going to point at the doodle underneath. Who drew this? Who do you think? Then, you were not trying to create true resurrection not anymore. for your sister. I, well, I did. After the war, and after my funding got shut down, I was obsessed with my work. I, I was close to a breakthrough. I thought I could do something. I thought I could finally unlock the secrets. But I couldn't. I... With all the siphoning that I did, with all the people I've sacrificed, with all the magical secrets, true resurrection is not achievable. I do not blame you for the loss of life accidents happen during scientific research. What I'm getting at is, this entire time we've been under the impression that you have been studying true resurrection as a means of reviving well. But if this drawing is from her, then it was simply a war effort. Or was there something more? Well. Someone else? What exactly were you seeking to revive? I thought you couldn't bring back strong wields. I couldn't. But all that was just Abby trying to lighten the mood. She was ever the cheerful one, even when things were so bleak. She would try and make sure people remembered what we were fighting for. Her mom said something similar. Who was it? She sounds like a wonderful person. Who, who was it that you were making the spell for? It was Abigail, but I never came even close. Her body is kept, buried with all the others who died in the war, in Belkin's proper. Even if I had figured out true resurrection, there was no way I would be able to get that close to the city. So, out of game, I'm having a hard time with timeline. one with, with one timeline. Yeah, because I think so, what we're confused so, about. She's writing about True Resurrection. She's obviously trying to make it, but there is a drawing that Abigail presumably created here. Yes. Implying that she was working on True Resurrection before Abigail died, because how else would Abigail have drawn this? I think I, I think I, I know what the, what the timeline was, because she said she threw herself into work after the war to bring Abigail back. Maybe she had like the notes, and that's just when Abigail died. That's when she really got intense. So I feel, research. I feel bad about making clarifications on things that I am. I don't know. I, I don't know if I should say. <laughs> Or not. You don't have I to. Have a way to you, fix you, that. So I would have to I have a feeling messages, that, but I have a way to fix that. Okay. Uh, and anyway, uh, I have you, a, you don't I have, have a to feeling clarify. that this page was used twice. That's the reason why. Actually, you know what? I'm going to clear it up because if I don't, it's just going to cause more confusion. Car she was doing up. general research on how to use necromancy effectively in the war during the war time before right. Abigail's death. Right. All of this is just her unlocking more secrets about necromancy that may yep. be adjacent to true resurrection, but not actively pursuing it. Uh, yes, not all that a, makes sense. Not as a priority right. until after her death. That's why I asked the question a little bit earlier, uh, like, was this for someone or were you, was this just a war effort? Were you just doing this okay. to well, help I, the war? I misinterpreted the question because um, no she answered it in reference to her... Bearing herself into her work was after Abigail died. Got it. Understood. We're good here. Sorry about yep. that. No, no, no. It's good. It's good. And I'm glad I got to clarify. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. oh, right. Well, I should read the next page then. And here we have the next page. Year 133. God, provide me with the next page. Oh, the next there page? I'm sorry? I said, I said, God, provide me with the next page. <laughs> Please, God. Here you go. Right. The next page. The war has slowed my ability to do research on necromancy. Viscount Orion has intelligence that the enemies have also been tapping into necromancy, and a few sects have mobilized their own undead armies. Once the war is over, I will see what the other kingdoms have learned from the School of Magic. I suggested we summon undead soldiers of our own to reduce new casualties, but Orion insists we use living units, citing the undead soldiers' frail nature and being incapable of acting on their own. Must investigate more on the remains of the true resurrection subject. 
must also investigate how to enhance the abilities of lesser undead units. Until then, no summoning. And because you're not going to read it out loud, I will read it out loud, um, that there is a drawing of a winking elf that's missing an ear uh, accompanying the entry, along with a different handwriting, presumably the handwriting of Abby. It says, you be safe in the battle tomorrow, or else I won't have a sketchbook to share anymore. <laughs> that's very funny. Oh, God, God, this was the fucking entry before she died, wasn't it? I see Probably. the fucking writing on the wall. <laughs> you can I'm see that Kara is looking down at the grass where she sits. All right. I, have I will read. Blaster oh, General. I propose that our unit to prepare similar strategy, and I was refused. For what? Morality. Being the bigger person. Fear. Yes, this Orion character seems like a fool, even if they're frail. It's better than sending in living people. It's better than sending in living people, but they were scared of the undead. Yes, well, they should be. The undead had knives. And where did that fear get us? We were overwhelmed. Exactly. This seems fairly foolish. In any case, flip. All right. And the final page only has... A single sentence, year 135, fall. Oh. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, so, no, we knew uh, it was going to happen. I will look at this and I will not read it. I will instead, I'll look at this and then I'm going to like flip the next page, uh, which will presumably be blank, and I'll flip the next page and then I'll close the book. I'll yep. look up. You can see the rest of the book has torn pages, presumably some of the pages missing that you guys have found. Right. I'll close the book. There are no more entries. Heed this, adventurers. Be picky, the hells are so picky. For the hells don't take good people. You can see that she's clutching at the grass underneath her, and she mutters under her breath, I could have saved so many if everyone had just but a moment to listen to what I had to say. And I found myself with a mess and only twigs and rocks as tools to clean it up. Well, now there's a chance to actually fix it. To what I end? Who who will listen? If not then, why now? Maybe I will. Because I think maybe there are more people that are willing to see the gray area. If you just show it to them. Yes, I'm sure a simple public statement will clear things up. I can't believe I've never tried it before. Dear people of Belkinus, you can see there's tears running down her eyes, kind of black as night. I'm not the Black Bane Queen, and I've been trying my best to help the Necromancers and everyone else in Belkinus. All your loved ones were merely killed and kidnapped by a bunch of mad lunatics. You may all go home now. I'm sorry. I want to reach over and touch her shoulder if she'll let me. She does. That's not what I meant. It's going to be a long road. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. But someone needs to take the first step, and Belkinus clearly isn't willing. My if you want exactly. the, If you want there to be a change, then somebody needs to reach out first. And you would be willing to take that step with this stranger? Look at, look at the people I'm traveling with. Do you think I've done anything more sane? <laughs> she just has a smile and wipes her face. You are truly... A strange folk. Once again, I don't think I've ever met anybody who's normal. I might have Very an well. idea. Then a favor for a favor, then. Mm -hmm. Especially since this favor will help me, because like I say, you stink of the Raven Queen, even now. Oh, it just kind of steps the back of it. <laughs> yep. And she reaches into her pack, and you she pulls out something. You can see that she kind of like does a little clicking with her fingers and you can see the runes on her backpack disappear. She lifts the the flap and pulls out a diamond. She holds it in her hand and it starts to dissipate as she starts chanting something low and whispers under her breath. And just cue up something. Her form starts to change and morph until you see 
on. Let's make sure I'm on the right page of notes. You see her start to change and morph as black, foggy clouds engulf her. And in her place stands a tall humanoid. Uh, Hold on. Let me... I'm concerned. Let's do this. Don't make me fight. You see a tall humanoid woman with silky black hair and a knightly gown to match. (gasps) She has various bracelets all around her arms and jewels of black ink and dark feathers littered all around her. But most notably around her neck, holding her robes together, is a small skull of a bird that you are all too familiar with. And she starts to channel the Raven Queen. Oh Whoa! my god! I wasn't ready for this. Oh my god. Uh, and I'm gonna be honest, it's seeing this, I think Luna's gonna drop to her knees, because how the fuck do you stay up when this is happening? I immediately start speaking in prayers. I immediately stand and point my hand. Like, getting ready to attack. Yeah, like, Renee's also kind of, like, moving in front of Francis, just, like, Yep, Francis's like, ah, jaw ah, drops, ah. all of the soup in his mouth just spills out, and he <laughs> drops his bowl on the floor, on the ground. Nah, uh, Renee is very much in, like, full-on protect mode. I'm like, ha ah. <laughs> Like, just pushing, pushing him almost back I a d- step. I don't know if this will help any of your fears, but Luna does not look like she's getting ready to fight. She is in awe. <laughs> Yeah, Brene just doesn't trust anything at the moment. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> hoping that helps totally a little understand. bit. Totally understand. Totally understand. But just, just like in case. I just feel that celestial feeling. It's just like, oh, I am to bow. I, I. Mm. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Yep. My head is to the ground. And you hear an ethereal voice speak out: "Be calm, children of the people of the realm. There is not to fear." I am the one which blessed your father, Vajran Icewind, so many years ago. Luna, it's just it's an absolute shock. Uh, I don't even know if she can say anything. She's just staring and like looking back at her sword and like back up. Like. <laughs> I know you have many questions, but this priestess, Kara Miharian, she acts as medium betwixt me and the mortal realm, and our time is short. Okay. I... Oh, God. I don't even know where to begin. Why did you want to lead her to Clovoy? That's... that's a start. Yeah, they... they like, listen. Like, when she looks over... Renee Thank looks over you, Renee. Out of like, yeah, no, listen, I got you if you want me to ask the questions. Oh, like, no, no, you no, seem no. a little perplexed. You Can see, you, you see, she stop. she puts one hand to her cheek a little bit and turns to the side, a, a little embarrassed. My apologies. The nuance of common language of mortals is confusing at times. I have only ever observed mortals. My purpose only ever to ferry them to the beyond. But millennia after millennia, I took an interest in the lives of mortals. What drives them? Why act as they do, knowing what comes in the end? T'was your father who fought and lived with such fervor, a man whose life by all rights should have ended, yet was determined to stave it off despite its inevitability, I, that I saw a chance at an answer. And, and so I promised to delay his fate though all it took was a single, mundane, unspectacular sword. I hope not to disappoint my child, but absolution is no more than a simple weapon born of the forge like any other. I find it quite amusing that your father and you consider it otherwise. It's... I don't know a normal blade that pulls... that levitates off the ground and throws itself at necromancy goes cold at the touch is that not the blade that i am afraid i cannot answer for mortal magics are beyond my understanding mortal magics what mortal magics i am sorry my child 
I know as much as you. Oh, why did you... So that's why you... Yes. You wanted his child. In exchange, I asked him to promise me his firstborn, that I may be a passenger and experience the life of a mortal, the reasons to live and fight on for another day, knowing their time is fleeting. And you have shown me so much, my child. Fret not, your thoughts, your actions, your dreams are yours to have and to keep. I am merely here with you through every step of the way. I think Luna's gonna cry. You can see, you, she goes gently to go caress your cheek and it's a familiar feeling, the same one you felt from Echo Dad long ago when you were training in Ruggawood. <sighs> Phaedron Icewind has long past my child rest easy never has his soul been disturbed the raven queen slowly turns to the other party members as well enoch solomon as have your mothers they rest peacefully i assure you <laughs> that's good i'm glad she's good you know, it's funny. Mm. I thought I'd be relieved. I thought I'd be relieved hearing that. I guess that's a double-edged blade, isn't it? She just turns to you with a, with a nice, gentle smile. My father's echo came out. Right after, not long after he died. Well, you know. You were there, I guess. I was so angry. I create everything for taking someone away like that so young. He had so much more life in him, I thought. She simply just uh, bows, bows her head ever so slightly. I am sorry, my child. Does it take that form? Because that's what I want it to. Do you know that? I am afraid that is beyond me. She, she, she nods again. And what now? That is for you to decide. Kara's channel grows weak. I must go now. It is pleasant to have finally met you, Luna Icewind. However it is you choose to live your life, you have done so well. Keep going. Yeah, Luna's gonna break down, and I think. And the cloud dissipates as Kara's form comes back and she collapses to the floor, gasping. <clears throat> oh, I hate doing that. <laughs> how, how often do you do that? Um, when she coughs, is there a bit of the black cloud coming out too? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Good. Thank you, Kara. <sighs> It's a fair trade, I think. <coughs> Just excuse me for a minute, please. Um, she's not like walking off screen. She's just gonna sit there for a sec. She just wants to compose herself. Yeah. <laughs> Poor woman didn't expect that. I'm currently like do two, doing two thumbs up towards Kara. Great. Yes. <sighs> that took a lot out of me. You can tell me your plans for the future in the morning. Whatever it is that we want to do with going into this place that will probably have me killed. Well, I, must I rest have now. a contingency for that, but yeah, we should probably sleep. And she just gets into her sleeping bag and turns over. Uh, before heading to bed, um, like seeing that Luna's just kind of, Luna always has to like take a minute to herself and it's like, okay, I understand that. I'm going to check on you once you're out, but uh, she is going to, Kind of go over to Nathaniel really fast and just kind of be like, "I'll I'll take those uh, letters back now." As a as you walk over, like I take that breath and finally yeah. relax from like the frozen uh, yeah. attack position uh, I was in. You you okay? Yes, that was definitely a fuck ton. Yeah, that was. Ooh. I that was a literal god. It yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> And well, not dead. 
So that's a plus. The sooner that this mission is completed, the sooner I can retire. <clears throat> but, yes, the notes. And I'm going to reach into my bag. Not my bag, my coat. I hope you're joking the about the retirement. Or are you? What? Oh. Uh, of course. Inside check, notes. motherfucker. <laughs> Inside check, motherfucker! Yeah, Davy, do you consent to this? Are you oh, lying to me? No, I got a critical uh, fail! Eight, no! A eight, crit nine. shit! I'm a master! A crit I fail 16? Crit Excuse me? <laughs> eight, uh, uh, that, it's... So it's not actually a crit. It's not actually a crit fail. Oh no! One um, of the the, the oh, E four roll was a things. one. Okay. Yeah, the was guidance say, was a one. Geez. Oh god, I, I got. But it's for still a, a failure. Uh, Eat shit! No! My face betrays no emotion. God damn it! You fucking snake. <laughs> All right, oh, well, Luca. Uh, sorry, not Luca. Uh, Fra Francis. Francis yeah. just like recuperating after that. It's just like. Okay, I'm going to go to yeah. sleep now and uh, try not to think I'll about that. I'll do a first watch then. Renee's going to tuck her letters away and just give a Nathaniel like a pat of like, you're good, thank you. And then immediately go over to Francis like, okay, um, yeah, do you do, do you want to do the, the back to back? Because fuck. Ah, uh, if we can, yeah. Okay, good. Ooh, finally, I am on watch on a camp. I always wanted oh, to do this. Oh, you're not taking watch. We are making sure you get your sleep. Oh. Oh, okay. You can take... Okay, you can take a watch with me later. Yes! I'll take the last one, if you don't mind. Yeah. If you want to. Yeah. Besides, I gotta uh. still stay up and fix something. Oh, my messages! <laughs> In that case, I'll take the... third to last... Okay. Um, my me DM some off my messages. Oh. I gotta send my 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 messages. Yeah. The message spells. Yeah. Your messages. So first one to Samuel because it's pretty much generic. Because I don't think unless Enoch, you have anything specific you would like to send to say. Uh, let's see. In twenty-five words, right? Yeah, twenty-five words. At the moment, I have uh, Samuel update from Enoch. We are moving back to Belkinus proper. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You have fifteen words. Uh, also tell him expect a guest. Expect prepare a guest. the deposition room. The deposition room, and that is all he'd like to say. Hope you're having a good night. It probably cuts off at some point. But yeah. Yep. <laughs> you get a message back. Good to hear. Hope he's doing all right. Church in Chester can be a bit much, especially with Eternals. Ha! Like, she will let Enoch know. All the shade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, she doesn't know. Yeah. He doesn't know. That's right. Doesn't. He doesn't Relax. know. Second message. Second sending. Lancel. We are moving back to Belkinus proper. Wait, then... I got it. I got oh? this one. Okay. Unless, you, unless you want to say it. Uh, I feel like she starts saying it like out loud. Because um, she usually likes to, to send her messages out loud so that people can like correct her if she needs it. So she probably like, starts saying it and imagine the thing's like, wait! <laughs> and she like pauses mid-sending. <laughs> uh. Where are you? Have they arrived? We are near Chester, moving south. Very important package. Any important updates? You get a response back. An angry, angry goblin arrived. <laughs> 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 so Renee just gives a nod of like, uh huh. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Kendrick. Town is well. Tapwater trying to send new letter. Prefers physical. Than magical. Mm. I think I know who what the letter is trying to say, and I feel bad, but it's okay. <laughs> It'll get found out later. Um, at least I have a theory on it. But yeah, any important updates? Otherwise, protectors oddly silent. Mm. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> the protectors have been oddly quiet, probably because we kicked their ass. 
I'm going to have to let Lancel know what happened at some other point because I have one more thing I need to send. Now, this one I'm not saying out loud. Uh, but we know who I'm sending it to. Tell me your secrets. No. <laughs> you know who I'm sending this to. Tell me no. your secrets. I am... Oh. Can, uh... I just... hmm. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, surprise. Not dead. We are moving back to Berkenis proper. So, we might have a plan for changing people's minds. Can you meet to talk? Tomorrow. And you're trying to hide this, yeah? Yeah. From everyone, including your brother? It, especially my brother. I'm gonna need you to roll stealth. Oh, fuck! Ah. So, question, with sending, do you have to speak it out loud, or can it be in your mind? Click the spell. Yeah, uh, okay. what's the spell I'll say? The spell. Actually, yeah, the spell. This, will, this will determine whether or not you have to roll a stealth check. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think it's just like I like the habit of it, but then I need to check. Sending, where are you? There you I'm are. I'm used to a very homebrewed version of sending, so. There we go. It does not specify. It does not specify. All right, your choice then. Um, I'm going to, yeah, no, she's not saying this out loud. Okay. Francis. I can reread the message if you need me to. Uh, yes, if you could. Okay. Uh, supplies, not dead. We're moving back to Perkinist proper, south. We have, we might have a plan for changing people's minds. Can you meet me to talk tomorrow? You get a message back. Good. I have found perhaps a way to bring you to help your friend. Mm. A plan would be appreciated. We have all the tools. Okay. Well, it sounds like we might have a way in. So that's fortunate. Wonderful. But we're going to have to figure that out uh, tomorrow. Yeah. While you are sitting up, yeah. watch, and sending these messages, Francis is just kind of gently elbow you as you are sitting back to back. Uh, huh? Rene. Yes? Have you, um... Have you thought about Luke recently? Why? Uh, after being in Colvway... I just been thinking about him more and how angry I am every time I do, but I can't stop thinking about him. And I don't know why. All these things with the necromancers and it's so confusing. I'm angry at him too. I understand that it is uh, not especially lately, but it's not, it's not specifically about the necromancy itself. It is but how you use it, yeah? Yeah, she does. Yeah. Well, then I am still mad at him. Oh, yes, I'm fucking pissed at him. And she just like ruffles his hair, like, yes, good. <laughs> oh, okay. But don't let that be the sort of thing that drives you. Especially after everything we've kind of figured out. Oh. He considers this for a moment and scratches his chin. I think I understand. Okay, <laughs> good. Uh, he just like leans back. Good night, Rene. <sighs> good night. How dare you both be adorable. <laughs> so who's the watch order? Uh, I think I'm first. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Daffy said he wanted to be third. Uh, I mean, I can do last. second or third. Yeah. Doesn't really matter what I do. I've just claimed the last shift. All right. We can be quick about this. Enoch, give me your perception check. All right. Where's that be? 22. You notice something over the horizon. Uh -huh. A figure, a small speck in the sky that <laughs> is slightly lit up by the lights of Chester City, just hovering there. Can't quite make out what it is. Fuck. 
Well, oh, no. in the meantime, it's not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna break eye contact with it. Yeah, you stare at it, and it stays valiantly just hovering there for a couple of hours throughout your entire watch, pretty much. I am. While I am well and aware of that figure, I am spending time fixing the gavel. Yes. Yeah. So do those, do those require rolls, or is this it's just a thing that you can do? It it, it is. It does require a roll. So I'm hoping for the best. Yes, there you go. It's fixed. There you yep. go. Fixed. So uh, that is fixed, and I I rack it. I see the symbols of magic as it runs along it. And I, I don't break eye. Like I keep looking at that figure. Yep. Just like staring at it while you're working on your gun. Just like. I. Whistle to Crow, and I want him to start flying that direction. Okay. Yep. So yeah, he easily can. He starts to fly. What's the. What's the max? Is there a maximum height that he can fly? Nope, he could just keep moving 30 feet. Okay, he flies out for about a few minutes. And before he reaches kind of like where the border of Belkinus would be, and instantly you see like a, a dim flash of light, and then you just see Kuro like in smoke just on the grass, like, way down, far, far that he fell. And pfft. Quick question. Can he make a dexterity saving throw? Sure. Because he he's pretty small. And he also is. He does he have, he does have evasion. He does have an evasion. You may. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's a 20. So this still happens. However, you re you try to recall him back, and he comes back limping, just like broken in pieces, sparks oh. flying out, and like smoke coming out of him. Oh, oh no! And uh, first off, mending him yep. back into <laughs> you mend back into him place. back, and you can see that the smoke coming out of him is not smoke of elect you know not electrical smoke. It is. Black necrotic smoke. Oh, oh. Oh! oh. Do I? After repairing him, it does go away. I am. Um, oh, God. You look, you look back, and the figure is gone. I'm going to. I'm going to step over to Nathaniel. Ooh. And I'm going to kick him awake. Oh, ow. Yep. It's not your watch, but we have a problem. What is it? There's something out there, and it knows that we're here. What? And I point towards Kuro, who's currently a little dinged. Damn. Damn it. Wick, put out the fire. Er, keep the right, fire. I'm gonna... It's already up. It's already up. Keep the fire. Don't let them know that we're aware. Wake everyone else up very quietly. Yeah. All right. Take care of it now. I'll get, I'll get to Luna. I'll, I'm relatively sure I can dodge a swipe. Maybe we'll see. And I politely approach and just start. <laughs> I'd say you better not gently. kick me away, girl. I'm gonna I, kick yeah, you. <laughs> I start. I, I start shaking her uh, by the shoulder. Hey, 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 we got a problem. We got a problem. But don't keep it down. There's something out there, and it's obviously knows that we're here and. It's bad. Uh, and pointing toward, I point towards Kuro. I had him do a recon check. Whatever you, it is, it's you not You need to be more happy. careful with your dog, Enoch. As she's like rubbing the the sleep out is of this her really eyes. Is the time to be criticizing them when we're about <laughs> to get attacked anyways? All right. Um, no, okay. Do you think we're about to get attacked? Just. Yes, I do. All right. Give me a second. You can um, see that Kara is actually awake, eyes open. Looking, staring up at the stars. We'll be fine. Oh. Uh, I have a special enchantment around Cloveway that extends for miles. Make sure I know every single necromancer that goes in and out of that place. And how do you and know that this other... is a necromancer? Does that extend to your location? It does, albeit a smaller scale. What if it isn't a necromancer? Well, then what I guess we're fucked. 
Okay, let me just. Of course you would. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna shake Renee awake. <laughs> uh, what? What? what I put I put my finger to my mouth. Midnight's calling. She just gives she like sighs and then gives like a little nod and then we'll just kind of like roll over to wake up. Um, Francis. Yep. I just... put my hand on this boy's mouth <laughs> mm -hmm. as he wakes up. Mm -hmm. it, it's okay. It's okay. But we we need to be awake in, in a while. Shit, shit's going down. Okay, just. Okay. He he nods his head very slightly. Okay. And she just gives a nod to Nathaniel of like, it's going to be all right. He's not going to hmm. freak out. <laughs> I want to give Nathaniel a look and whisper, I have a way to take a look around the camp without leaving now, if you'd like me to. I'll need someone to keep an up to watch my back, so to speak. I can go, I can go a fairly far distance out. Nine, nine hundred feet, a thousand feet. Do it. Gonna summon my echo. I don't okay. know what it's gonna what it's gonna be, but I'm gonna get a little closer to the I'm horses. Gonna, to see. I'm gonna have myself kind of stand by on one side, kind of just taking a a defensive like position, ready to make a shot, and then Kuro will stand in front of Luna. All right, as, as a uh, just to make sure if anybody's trying to cross that barrier. So you all take a defensive stance. Getting ready for whatever it is out there. And Luna, you start you summon your echo. And it at first takes the form of Vagrant Ice Wind, but it seems to shift and fade like a cloud of black fog. Its face is no longer his, but instead blank and featureless. With the Raven Queen appearing before you, you realize that all along that your father was not still with you. At least not in the way that you thought. Though his being has passed on and his soul laid to rest, his spirit and all that he has taught you lives on in a new form. Your echoes, features, and smog start to change and morph as it forms into something new. One with long messy hair and scars across her toned arms, and a tunic that gives just enough protection without sacrificing mobility an echo befitting of one who wields absolution, the sword with the mark of the Raven Queen, Luna Ice Wind. Uh, <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, Echo Art! Holy shit! I wasn't ready and for that. while you guys god are taking the watch, damn. I think we're gonna end the session there. Okay! Why? Okay. That's so fucking cool, dude! Oh, that's dope as shit! <laughs> the scars glow! I... Everything glows! Holy shit! <laughs> Joe! <laughs> <laughs> you bastard! You planned for this! <laughs> I wasn't ready for that! Holy Joe. shit! You gotta warn a girl! Oh my god! Oh, but if I warn you, then you won't be there for the surprise. Yeah, yeah oh no, that's fair. You wouldn't be getting this. Um, oh my that's god. That's the best kind of prize. It's a surprise. Ah. Oh god. Oh my god. Thanks, Joe. You've made me cry three times this session. Holy shit. Yay! <laughs>